You are listening to Weapons Hot on Sports War Radio and the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Darnold fires one into the end zone. It is caught. That's a And now, here is your host, CJ, the painkiller, DeSimone, and Kevin Jackson. What's going on, Jets Nation? Welcome to another edition of Weapons Hot, a New York Jets fan broadcast here on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network, Sports War Radio, Snowman Digital Media, and quite frankly, any place where you get your New York Jets fix, news, fan news, etc. I am your host, CJ, the painkiller, DeSimone. And now it is time for me to introduce my squadron. So let's give it up. Now, here's a little story I got to Ladies and gentlemen, making up the trilogy here on Weapon Tot, put your hands together for Mr. Kevin Jackson. I'm saying, still. All right, once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back for another White Hot episode of Weapons Hot, ready to get it in. Um, again, I'm really excited about our guests. You know, we, we always uh, seem to have a way of bringing in some some really fire folks uh, to discuss Jets football with us, so I'm really looking forward to getting into that. Um, got a few things to discuss today. Um, you know, probably going to spend a little bit of time in free agency, so if you got your notes out or uh, if you have uh, some information that you'd like to share with us, you obviously know, get with us in the comments, leave your questions, leave your comments. Um, weapons hot, man. Let's get it. I'm ready to go. All right. And now, introducing the third member in our squadron. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen from the top secret bunker over there, way out in Idaho. Put your hands together for Jimmy the Reaper Jardine. Reaper, what's going on, brother man? Oh, it is finally Sunday, my friends. Sunday, you guys are at 7 p.m. I'm at 5 p.m. But it's Jets football time, guys, because what off season? There's no such thing with us. Oh, yeah. And I, just like Kevin, super excited about our guest tonight. CJ, hit him with that weapon, Todd Intro. I thought you'd never ask. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a very special pilot joining us today. And you know, as always, we got to bring our weapons hot guests in the right way. So we got some very special music queued up for him. There it is. I hear it. Ah. Yes. Oh, Drake and Future? Let those tunes just (laughs) fall. Just let it flow. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen from the Sports Hit List broadcast here on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Put your hands together for Mr. Declan Rumpman! Oh my God. All right. <laughs> Bro, I was going, insane. I was saying, Declan on the guns. Declan on the guns. Let's go. You have, uh-huh. you have outdone yourself. I was not expecting a little Drake and Future jump, man. Uh, shout out to 2016. Uh, that was fire. Oh, my God. I've been introduced. That is insane. <laughs> how, how, how do you even follow that up? Oh, my God. I didn't know what to do when you guys were getting introduced, by the way. Oh, my God. <laughs> I look like an embarrassed son, like looking at his father and his mom dancing. This, man. We, always, we do this. This is how we uh, do this. Uh, uh, this is, you, you, like, uh, like Kevin always says, you know you've been introduced when you get a weapon hot introduction. No question. So no, Nothing else measures up. Nothing else yeah, you, told, you, told me, you told me you were bringing a, uh, a fire song, uh, and you lived up to that. You did okay. just that. So we're already off to a great start. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so Declan, really quick, I know that you've been on the show before for a short amount of time. Now, there are some people, though, that have never gotten the opportunity to hear about you, to hear about well your show. So please, uh, give us like a, a quick synopsis. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so pretty much my name is Declan Krogman. Uh, as CJ alluded to, I was on the show, I think once back in November during the Jets bye week uh, as like an emergency guest host. Yeah. Um, and so obviously happy to be back, first of all. Uh, so thank you guys uh, for that. 
Uh, second of all, you know, I have a new show uh, with Greg Polis and Stefan Polis, also from the Sports Hit List, uh, coming tomorrow, uh, debuting on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. It's called Smoke and Mirrors. Uh, Mondays and Fridays at 1 o'clock from 1 to 2. We'll start tomorrow. Uh, and that's kind of why I'm here. CJ had asked me to come on, I think, last week. And then we made it work this week. Um, yep. And I'm super excited to be here, obviously. Uh, as I said, in terms of myself, I play baseball and football. In football, I'm a quarterback. Baseball, I'm a pitcher and an outfielder. Um, and I've been, you know, kind of, I've been with the hit list for since September, 2020 or August, 2020, uh, early parts of, uh, football season for sure. Um, and I'm just excited to keep talking about the, uh, the games I love, uh, on a network that, uh, has been nothing but gracious, uh, and I'm very grateful for. Yes. So I appreciate that. Yes. Hey, we appreciate having you. Let me tell you something. Cause it's always, you know, it, it's always a pleasure to have other guys that are also on the worldwide sports radio network coming and joining us last week. We actually had the boss on, uh, uh, Weapons Hot, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Errol Marks, who joined us for a few minutes. And it was always, you know, it's always great to have um, Dav Errol on because he always brings a very unique perspective to the table. And, you know, some of his takes are rather controversial, but you know what? Some of them are definitely also spot on. You know, Errol does a couple of shows during the week, also does the weekend crunch on uh, Long Island Radio on your FM dial. For those which of you. Is, which is insane, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, which, which is awesome because, I mean, you know, just showing that Worldwide Sports Radio Network is starting to reach out and we're starting to get some other peeps, um, you know, involved. So one of the main topics for tonight's show is free agency. Now, remember, today's February 28th, tomorrow, March 1st, free agency fast approaching. We kind of talked about this on both Weapons Hot and Weapons Hot last uh, after dark last week. Um Shout out to Harrison Fireball Glazer for uh, for joining us for joining us on uh, on Weapons Hot After Dark on our YouTube channel. Be sure to go and check that out if you haven't already. And you know, we there's some very interesting things coming up as far as the draft. We're now starting to head over into the legal tampering period. So, Jax, I'm going to start this off with you. Then we're going to go around the room. We'll go to Reaper, and then obviously we'll follow up with Declan. You know. We're starting to see some different stories, some different um, now flavors coming out, yeah. including the Panthers. I mean, I don't know what the hell is going on with the Panthers. So, by the way, shout out to First Sergeant Matthew Sansati, if you're listening. Uh, he's a First Sergeant over at Patrick Space Force Base uh, here in sunny Florida. Um, diehard Carolina Panthers fan, so I wanted to give him a shout out. But we were kind of having a conversation a little bit about free agency and especially about the offer on the table with the Panthers in regards to Deshaun Watson. Now, the Deshaun Watson saga now took a, a left turn, pretty much expected. Everybody expected this left turn to kind of happen, but we didn't expect that it was going to be as dug in as it was. Apparently, earlier this week, or, or earlier last week, should I say, uh, Deshaun Watson met with uh, David Culley, the brand-new head coach of the Houston Texans, and basically flat out told him, I have no desire to play for this franchise. I have no desire to play for this team. I want to be traded and my time here is done. So that's going to leave Nick Cesario into uh, that. That leaves him in a very uh, precarious position because either you're going to look for trade partners to deal Deshaun Watson, or if you're just going to be that, that, that kind of a, a dope, which right now it kind of seems like he's heading down that trajectory where he really wants to get that, get himself entrenched in where he's looking at Deshaun Watson as his franchise quarterback. You know, now Deshaun Watson has pretty much publicly come out and said that he's already entrenched, but now we hear the outrageous offers coming from Carolina in which a package, which was introduced about something about seven draft picks Christian McCaffrey, Robbie Anderson, a couple of other prominent names, which escape me right now. Jax, I wanted to get your thoughts on that because we've seen this all over Facebook and everybody was kind of scratching their heads going, what the hell is this? Yeah. So really quick, tell me, tell me what you saw. Tell me what you're thinking. Tell me what's, what, what's brewing. You know, I, I don't know what's brewing. And, and to be perfectly honest with you, um, it's extravagant. It is an extremely uh, large and varied kind of package it is, if, if that is uh, the proposition. We're talking about multiple picks, multiple players. Um, but to be perfectly honest with you again, it sounds, again, a lot like something that just 
is a part of silly season. This is a season where the most outlandish things are going to be what it is that we talk about um, because there isn't anything real. No, no, the team, neither of the teams have said that this is what is going to be or what is being proposed. So, you know, again, I take this with a, I take this with a grain of salt. And uh, also just, just to think about it in terms of um, the, the whole Deshaun Watson meeting Cully and, and, and now having to, to choose between uh, packages available. Um, what really did they expect? I mean, Deshaun Watson having, you know, being in this position where he's actually playing above average football with a subpar supporting cast, coaching staff, uh, player personnel group around him, and then saying that he wants to, to have a little bit more input in, into the into the, the, the processes that, you know, kind of go into uh, seeing what the final product is, and then having them completely ignore what it is that he says, and then signing a guy like David Cully, who has no experience, and who, who to be perfectly honest with you, and, and I guess if you guys, you know, disagree, I'd like to hear that, but uh, a lackluster uh, kind of a, a, a choice for them. Um, Easter B, Cesarios, those guys, man, I, I think they're really doing their best to try to make it seem like this is a farce um, in how it is that they're handling this. And and Deshaun Watson is, is you know, by all rights um, and should be pissed and, and should be ready to go. And, and, you know, meeting with David Coley, especially how many weeks after the guy was actually signed, I mean, th- th- what what kind of priority does he, does, does that make him feel like he is? Um, as the franchise quarterback. So look, the, I, 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 again, I, I try to stay away from, you know, the, the speculation about the picks and the compensation because it sounds ridiculous. Um, and, and I get that, but I, I just be honest with you. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, it, it, it doesn't sound right to me. It doesn't sound good. It, 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 it sounds like it's exorbitant. And I understand that, you know, all of these packages are going to be large and they're going to be, you know, wide ranging, but uh, that in particular, no, I, I, I don't, I don't think that that actually makes sense. I don't think it's realistic. And uh, I'll just be honest. I, I don't I don't think it's something that we should really pay much attention to at this point. All right. I got you. Reaper, talk to me. What are what are your thoughts? I know that you've been incredibly outspoken on social media about all of this. So I'm very curious to hear your thoughts uh, put together all in a nutshell here. Look, Carolina can offer whatever they want. I would I would assume that they're ready to do something along those lines. Uh, Christian McCaffrey coming off injury and things like that. Like maybe they're kind of questioning having him long-term. Um, so maybe potentially looking at dealing him while they have some, while they have some value. Um, but think about it like this. Deshaun Watson has to approve the trade because of his no trade con- clause in his contract. Why would he want to go to Carolina? Well, I think the question for that would be easy enough to answer. They have a solid running game. They have a, a decent passing game. Joe Brady has done really great things with that offense. So he could step in and pretty much succeed. I think Deshaun Watson in Carolina would make them really an instant contender, I think, with the roster that they currently have. But here's the thing. If Carolina is just going to give up all of that player personnel and all of that draft capital, it's the exact same situation that Watson's in in Houston right now. So why would he agree to that sort of a trade? He's like, he's going to, he's mad because his weapons are being dealt for peanuts right now in Houston. Why would he approve a trade to another team that's going to deal all of their weapons just to get him in there and put him in the same situation? I don't necessarily buy that aspect of it. Um, the, the aspect that it would be approved, um, and really Carolina doesn't help Houston at all in, in the draft. Like they can throw every pick they have at them. They still don't have the number two pick. They still don't have the number three pick. The only two teams in this equation, I think that make any sense are the jets and the dolphins and the jets more so because I don't think Houston, maybe with a new regime, they don't care about this as much, but trading your only franchise star that you have left to get your picks back. I don't see it happening. I don't. I, I don't think they would survive Houston media and Houston fans. They've already. Those guys have already suffered enough with Harden leaving, with everybody jumping ship in Houston. But um, I think the Jets are the, really the only logical conclusion. And I think because of that, it's not going to be as drastic a trade compensation as everybody thinks it is. So what I think about Carolina, they would have to make a trade offer like that just to be in the equation because of the number eight pick. It just holds no value when the two other teams that are in the mix have the number two and the number three. 
All right. So, Declan, I know you got the 30,000-foot view of all of this. Now, obviously, you don't have a dog in the fight. But no. I do know on your on your show that you're a part of the sports hit list. You guys kind of dive into all things NFL when you guys talk about it and stuff like that. Tell me what what right. your view is. So my view on the entire Deshaun Watson thing, um, the whole saga situation and, and kind of ne- negative situation for Houston, that is, um, I kind of agree with Jimmy uh, on a good on a, like a good chunk of what he was saying in terms of you know, Deshaun Watson came out and said he doesn't want a Carmelo Anthony type of trade situation um, where they're going to move their entire franchise to get him. So to trade guys like, you know, I've heard Curtis Samuel's name in the mix, Brian Burns, um, and, you know, Robbie Anderson and McCaffrey, obviously. To trade guys like that, you're now downgrading your franchise, not a knock on Deshaun Watson because Deshaun Watson is totally, I think he's worth, you know, some of the insane capital that they're saying. Not the most ridiculous stuff, but some of it, like three first round picks, I think he's worth. Now, do I think that they're going to give him that? Because no, Houston has no leverage in these trade talks. They know that, I mean, if they don't think they have to trade him, everybody who's going to be in talks with them think that they that he has to be traded because if he holds out, it's a lose-lose for both situations, right? So now, on everything that Jimmy said and that I totally, you know, I don't want to say vibe with, but I totally get like like the Dolphins and the Jets would make the most sense considering they have the second and third pick. And I don't think the Dolphins would really be too – you know, emotionally connected with Tua to move him. You know, I feel like they would have no problem moving him to Houston. And I think the Jets would really have no problem getting rid of Sam Darnold or not drafting Zach Wilson if it meant having a 25-year-old already perennial all-star MVP candidate uh, as your quarterback to start your franchise. Uh, Three first-round picks is a lot in terms of what you're going to move, but I think they have to move him. I kind of don't think that they will. I think that they're – I think that the Texans are that poverty of a franchise – and are that bad that they might not put something together. And if they do, and if they ever do anything, we're hearing NFL execs saying that they're going to do something after the draft. I mean, that limits all all potential trade capital that you're going to get in. It destroys their entire, the entire value for Watson. They have a guaranteed number two or number three pick right now. And at this point with them not having a first or second round pick, I think, I think Houston is going to play tough for right now. But I think as the closer and closer the draft gets and as more and more teams resolve their quarterback issues and free agency, I think Houston's going to start to panic and they're going to make a pre-draft move. And that's also going to drop the value. I and, agree and, and, and I was, yeah, I was just going to say that same thing. It's going to less, it's going to, uh, I guess, shorten what it is the expectation is for them to get it mm-hmm. back. Um, not, not to mention the fact that it, it would solidify um, kind of the idea that Houston is, is, is that poorly a run of an organization if they start to do stuff like that and ends up costing themselves what it is that they get back from uh, from a trade yeah. absolutely tj you mind just quickly um yeah and what you guys both said is such a good point like with the free agent moves um we're not going to see the dolphins sign a free agent quarterback no we're probably not going to see the we're not going to see the jets see, sign a free agent quarterback if they're going to go for a guy at, um at with the number two pick unless they you know trade for watson um, if they go for a guy at the number two pick or, or if they get rid of Sam, they're not going to, these teams are not going to sign free agent quarterbacks. So in a way, the Texans could wait till the draft to see if they could build up even more value somehow. You don't know, especially depending on if a team trades up to get a quarterback. Like you don't know if that, if that four pick or if Miami moves a pick or if uh, the Bengals or if anybody moves a pick early on, you could see an interesting switch where the Texans might feel like, okay, now the really only two teams that I need, are that I could get something for is Miami and the Jets. Cause you don't know what Carolina is going to do either. Cause I don't think they trust Teddy Bridgewater that much. I think Teddy Bridgewater take the first part of his last name. As much as I love Teddy, I thought he was drafted into a tough situation where he got injured. Uh, he's a bridge quarterback yeah. from one to the next. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that right now, you know, for Carolina to give up the, for, for even the story to come out that Carolina is willing to part with as much capital Right over there. I think you'd actually be dooming Deshaun Watson to an actual worse situation than he's already facing in Houston. See, and this is where I think it plays into the New York Jets' hands. And I've been saying this over the past couple of weeks. And I know that everyone out there kind of um kind of like t- take took what I was saying with a little bit of a grain of salt. But I, I think that th- the longer that this plays out, this is going to be Joe Douglas. Okay, look, we'll give you the number two overall. Okay, we'll give you Seattle's first round pick next year. We'll throw in Sam Darnold. That's what we got. And this is exactly what he's doing. 
Because at this point, Joe Douglas has probably got his plans all mapped out right now, along with Robert Sala. Granted, there are conflicting stories coming out, which no one can really put any truth to, that the Jets are conflicted about moving on from Sam Darnold. Here's where I call kind of bumpkiss on that is if they wanted to keep Sam Darnold, you come out and you say you want to keep Sam Darnold. He's your starting quarterback going forward. And then you map out your plan from there. So Joe Douglas has got no allegiance to Sam Darnold. So he didn't, he didn't draft him. Right. So, which means that at this point, having Robert Sala in, bringing Michael Floor in, bringing a brand new staff in. You have a brand new coaching staff. Nothing from the old regime is left now. So we have a complete, a completely blank, uh, clean canvas. So now Joe Douglas is going to put his fingerprints all over this team. And he's going to build this team in his image. And I think the best part about it, which all of us can agree, is that there's zero interference from the Johnsons. Because by now, you know that Woody Johnson would have been in Joe Douglas's ear saying, get me Deshaun Watson, and I don't give a damn what it takes. We're still not even sure if that's not the case now, though, to be honest with you. Well, it, even if it is the case, I'm sure that Joe Douglas is probably looking at, at, uh, at Woody Johnson right now and probably saying, Who, who's the football dude here? Right, right, shut the fuck <laughs> Joe Douglas can right. Joe Douglas can beat up Woody just, Johnson. I'm not worried about that. Yeah. Go to your penthouse over there. Go sit in the corner. Order your bottle of of of, of Dom Perignon or whatever it is, and just shut your mouth and yeah. leave the, leave the organizational yeah. decisions to me. Because let the big boys let the big boys do the talking. Exactly. So, uh, uh, so now here's here's the beautiful thing: is that the Jets actually have an opportunity now to rewrite everything. Okay. So I think that regardless, I just don't see Carolina giving up that much capital. So I really think that that deal is not, is not realistic. I still think that the longer that this goes on, I think the jets are still going to end up being the best option for Houston. So uh, I, I just think it's, it's, it's crazy to think otherwise. Now I could be wrong. The dolphins could come out and decide that they, you know, they want to punt on Tua, which would actually make that decision to tank not last year, but the year before last, in order to draft Tua, very ridiculous and would make their front office look incredibly weak. But who knows? You know, so for right now, the Jets now going full steam ahead right over to free agency. This is where it's going to pose different uh, different categories because we know that this team's full of holes. Yeah. So we know that Joe Douglas is going to be looking to get some key pieces to plug some holds, but fill the rest of it with the draft. Yeah. So the Jets, as I've said in past, are probably in the best position right now than they have ever been in this franchise's history in regards to cap space, in regards to draft assets, and in regards to what direction they can head in the future. With regards to leadership. Right. Uh, you know, very specifically, um, it, it, it we, we've been discussing this, uh, you know, on, on quite a few shows um, going back the, the, the course of the past few weeks, how, you know, the change of the guard actually is going to, you know, basically signal um, a new way to look at the Jets and how it is that they're building. So, you know, a, a lot of this, again, it, it, it's ridiculous talk. I think we went into this season. Um, you know, especially once it was announced that Deshaun Watson uh, wanted out of Houston, I think we went into this entire process being the best possible landing spot for him, uh, not only with regards to his own uh, potential uh, on the field, but also with regards to what Houston would actually get back in any potential deal. Um, and I, I don't think that's going to change. Uh, th there, there isn't anything from any outside source that's going to miraculously switch around Um you know, who's able to give what and, 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 and what it means to have an, a, a situation like this available to a franchise quarterback who, uh, for all intents and purposes, could actually make his name. And I mean, we're talking about Deshaun Watson, a, you know, three three time, you know, straight pro bowler. Um, but coming to New York and putting that stamp, that brand on his name and him putting his uh, brand on this team. 
it's a game changer. I don't think there's any other situation that provides that type of opportunity for him, nor does what it is that he brings provide a better opportunity for us into this next season. Gotcha. So so now Um, what I want to do is I want to go through some of these, um, uh, what you call it, (laughs) some of these comments on Twitter. And I'd like to thank everyone who's watching right now. Shout out to Frank and Goglia for watching. Anthony Triola. Ruben Fernandez Vargas, who I've been interacting with, hey, um, who, who actually chimed in going, same old Jets. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore, Ruben. Not anymore. Right. So, uh, uh, new organization. Uh, Stephen Tranny chiming in. Uh, hey. Ask the question. CJ, do you, want, do you still want Sam to stay with the team? I answered him. I think his time here is done, but I won't be upset if he's retained. Because at this point, we really don't know exactly what the Jets are going to do. My honest opinion is they're going to move on from him because otherwise I think something would have been said otherwise. So right now, Joe Douglas is playing everything very close to the vest. That's the way that he wants to play it. That's the way he's been playing it all of this time. So I think it. I, I think it's pretty safe to say that's the way they're going to go. Um, Frank and Goglia chimes in. If Carolina offers that pass uh, package, we need to gracefully bow out. If we can get Watson for three first, get it done. Number two this year in 23 and our Hawks pick next year, maybe a 2020, uh, 2022 third. We are too far away to give up more. Absolutely. You know, but, uh, but I think that honestly, Deshaun Watson can be had for less than that. I don't think that Deshaun uh, three first round picks are what's going to take to get Deshaun Watson out. The Houston Texans are in salary cap hell. Yeah. They need a bailout. The worst way, all right? They needed a bailout worse than the airline industry back when the stock market crashed in 2009. Wow. Okay? So, you know, r- right now, the Jets pretty much have everybody by the Cuyones and can pretty much dictate terms as to what they can do. Plus, Watson has the final say on where he gets traded to. And right now, he's come out and said he wants to get traded to the – he either wants to get traded to the Jets, the Dolphins, or the Panthers. And if the Panthers and the Dolphins are not going to offer up a good enough package – to get Watson, guess who he's coming to? Yeah. We have to be clear that that, that package, though, man. Mm-hmm. My, my, I, I think, and one of the, one of the fellows in the comments, uh, Ray Burgess, sorry if I butchered your name, pulling for Russell right. to get moved means Seattle What's up, Ray? Year becomes a top 10. That's what I've been trying to say to people is don't sleep on that Seattle pick. Russell Wilson is just as upset with Seattle as Deshaun Watson is with Houston. Yeah, but I think, though, I think, though, Jimmy, though, sorry to cut you off. I'm going to let you finish your point in just a second. Mm -hmm. I think, though. I'm going to let you finish. Hit him with the Kanye. I think that, uh, uh, I think that seriously, Russell Wilson is basically sending a message to his front office staff that he is tired of getting his ass beat on a regular basis. And I think that he hasn't formally come out and requested a trade, but he is voicing his displeasure, which is something that you rarely hear Russell Wilson do because from from all the reports about Russell Wilson, he's a straight up guy. He's very involved with Seattle charities and so on and so forth. He's got a lot of stuff that he is, that he's got his hands in over in Seattle. So for this kid to pipe up, okay, he's not piping up because he wants to get moved. He's piping up because he wants the organization to do something about it to fix their present situation because otherwise he's going to get himself killed or his career is going to be considerably shortened. Now, he's if not that, wrong, though. It, no, he's it, not. More, more, hits, more hits than anyone over the course of the past few right. years. More hits, more so, hits so, I mean, he's not, he, he's not wrong for piping up, but I think that – him coming out publicly now puts the spotlight on Seattle to say, well, we need to make our franchise quarterback happy or, you know, there's the potential that he could want out. And then guess what? Jamal Adams would be stuck. I on was, I was <laughs> just going to say, but Jimmy, go ahead, finish your point. Well, what, what I'm saying is, you know, let's not forget the, or that Russell Wilson has also said, He's also openly declared which teams that he would want to be traded to if it comes to that, which is so, crazy. Yeah, I saw yeah, that, that's uh, Dallas, that's right. pretty. Yeah, it's to that. That's saying a lot without saying a lot. Right. So let's just keep that in mind. My point being is this: Houston's unwillingness to talk about Deshaun Watson right now could be a benefit in disguise because of the fact 
that if we said, hey, we're going to give you our number two pick this year, we're going to give you our pick, the Jets pick, first round in 2020, 2022, and then if that deal were to get done, that Seattle pick, just like Ray said in the chat, that could turn into a top 10 pick and be better than our pick. We could very well be in the in the low teens, high 20s next year, especially if we have Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson, exactly. Right. So my point being is don't sleep on that Seattle pick just yet. Let's, let's kind of see how that shakes out first. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's, it's going to be curious to see exactly how all of these picks will shake out, but you know what? We got to wait till the end of April. 100%. We, still, we still got a long way to go. Free agency coming up. We're now, I think, Tomorrow, I no, I think we're already in the legal tampering period. It, yeah, but also keep in mind, March 9th, those teams that are grossly over the salary cap, you have to start cutting your players or you have to start getting your finances in order because before the league year rolls in and roll call comes, and then you start getting hit with um with penalties and so on. So this hard cap still has yet to yield some interesting names being cut, but I think over the next few days, you're going to start to see those cuts ramp up, especially closer and closer when we get to the to the ninth. Now, March 9th is uh, d- that's when that ends the legal tampering period, and also, but it also gives the clubs that are over the salary cap the opportunity to kind of handle their business before the league year rolls over on March 17th. March 17th at 4 p.m., dude. Let me tell you, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be buck wild, yeah. It's going to be buck wild. So now, before we start talking about that, of course, top fives. Now, Declan, I'm going to put you under the the, the microscope right about now. Okay, okay so talk right. to me about your top five free agents that you would like to see uh, Gang Green go after. All right. So, I mean, as a Giants fan, it's more like the top five. I don't want to see them go after. (laughs) I feel you, but come on. Now, Listen, I'll start this with a controversial one. Um, I mean, maybe not controversial, but definitely um, unorthodox, I would say. So they always say don't pay big running backs. And I'm sure you know where I'm going immediately from what I'm saying this, given we all know who the big running back is up for free. Green Bay, maybe? Yep. Yeah. Aaron Jones. (laughs) Aaron Jones is up for free agency. Uh, after a couple of years in Green Bay, it feels like he's only been there two years, um, but he's up after a couple of years in Green Bay. He's been solid. Uh, and if this is a team that gets to Sean Watson or that is trying to lure to Sean Watson or thinks that they can win with Deshaun Watson within the next three to four years, this might be a guy that would work for you guys in terms of value exponential. If you can get the, co- if you can get the contract, if you don't pay him too much, if you get him at the right price, I think this is a guy that you can win with where you don't have to spend you know, over the top cap room, like, you know, over, shoot the cap off and go nuts with him. So I think that's a guy to keep in mind. Uh, I would think, I don't think that he's been linked to the Jets. I kind of don't think it's going to happen. I think Green Bay will try to retain him because they're going to try to get all they can out of Aaron Rodgers last two, three years, even though we probably think he could play for seven, but they drafted a quarterback and kind of shot themselves in the foot, in my opinion there. Um, but the Jets should definitely go after him, in my opinion. Uh so another guy that I came up, you want me to give all five right now? Or? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I right, got you. So we got a guy up there, uh, Yannick Ngawe. I think I'm saying that right. He's mm-hmm. defensive. Yannick Ngakwe. Ngakwe. Yep. Yes. Uh, traded from Jacksonville to Minnesota. Uh, this is a guy who, and I, I feel like Chris Collinsworth, every time you, you, know, you say, this is a guy. I don't know if you guys are aware of that meme. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the time. This is a guy. Who I tell you, I would love to have in my locker room because <laughs> let me tell you, his that's biceps spot. are just was, something wild, and he's just got on. an order that won't quit. I'm sorry, that's fine. On that's fine. Exactly. On. So, <laughs> this is a guy, Yannick Ngawe of the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, I think I said Vikings by accident. I got the wrong. Pre- per- no, he was traded to the Vikings, and then yeah. they traded him to yeah, Baltimore. Jacksonville Vikings Ravens. So this is a guy. Who's, this is a guy. Uh, he's gonna do that with Kershaw and Matt Stafford and the LA connection. Oh my god. <laughs> Sunday night football is going to be insane with them. Uh, yes. Anyway, so Yannick Ngawe is a guy that you could totally get nice reps from, uh, and you could put him on your defensive line. Obviously, he's a premier defensive lineman. He's up for free agency the first time in his career. Uh, and this is a guy, again, if we're going to say that the Jets are in win now, if you guys think that, I don't think they are in win now. I think they're a couple of years away. But if you get to Sean Watson, you start the clock exponentially further and exponentially quicker. Uh, 
I would I would go with Nagao. Yeah, there we go. He's putting the Jets uh, little <laughs> koozie in the in the screen there. Uh, I got to get a Giants one, but I don't drink because I'm not coming up. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I That's think Nagao. Yeah, good. <laughs> uh, I think you're gonna get me in trouble, Jimmy. Uh, I think Nagao is a guy that you could put on the line, and he could totally you know fill the void of Leonard Williams. So I kind of like him there. I don't know if I like all these five free agents in terms of what if the Jets can get him, if they overpay for him, I don't think it's a good idea. But in terms of strictly value and guys that are on the market that you can go for is good. Now, this is this player, right, that I'm uh, that I'm next about to mention. He comes from Washington. I view him as if I'm the Jets, if I'm a lot of teams in the league, you need this guy on your offensive line. Brandon Sheriff, guard, Washington out of Iowa. Uh, he's Rookie contract expired. He's finally up. I wanted the Giants to get him a couple of years ago. I think they drafted, was it Eric Flowers or Justin Pugh instead of him? Horrible pick regardless, or I think Washington might have let him, uh, might have took him beforehand. Uh, exponentially amazing. I got to stop saying that, but he's in, he's incredible in the run game. Um, and he could totally, you know, plow guys that are, uh, you know, 290, 330. This is, this is the type of player that plays smash mouth football on the line. Uh, and is excellent for run protection and can protect your quarterback and is definitely something you're going to need if you have Deshaun Watson uh, in a New York Jet uniform come the fall. So that's my biggest free agent uh, that I would go with there. Next, let me pull up my list. All right. So another offensive lineman, uh, we go a guy that the Jets were targeting last year uh, at the fran- at the franchise tag period. Uh, the Patriots snagged him back up. Uh, that was Joe Tooney or Thunny, however you want to say it. He's been pretty good. He did a good job protecting uh, Tom Brady a couple of years ago. Uh, and now he, he did an okay job protecting Cam Newton. That team was kind of a, kind of a mess. And it did start – while it may have started with Cam Newton, that team was a mess. Uh, you know, Joe's a guy who's in big need of a, uh, of a fresh start, and I think the Jets um, can definitely uh, provide that for him. Now, here's my fifth guy, and this is a guy that maybe I don't think they should get, but a guy that Joe Douglas might pick up the phone and by far the most controversial after the season. Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, whether Pitts, whatever Pittsburgh does with him, I don't think the Jets should get him, but I think the Jets will have cautiously have their hand on the phone when in talks with their camp, unless the likelihood, and this is why I put him fifth, because it's the most unlikely. I don't think they should do it. I don't even know if it will get to this point, unless Pittsburgh drops that franchise tag or tries to extend him big time. Juju is what I'll leave you with uh, as, my, as my last pick. Extremely unconventional, unlikely. This is 2021 Jets football. If you guys think this is a different organization, we're going to see some different moves and some different time frames. So that'll be my fifth guy, as crazy as it sounds. Yeah, I'm interested okay. with that Juju pick. What happened? I'm interested in that on that Juju pick. Yeah. I don't like it, but I don't hate it. I get that. Yeah. I, I don't like it that much either. I don't think it's going to happen, but I think it's an interesting little shot in the dark that you might want to keep your eye on if he hits the market. Definitely. He will. He will. Pittsburgh yeah, he's he, he's definitely going to hit the market. And then the question is, is that Juju's also also said that he's very interested in in playing with Sam Darnold again. So th- that could be a catalyst in which, should the Jets not be able to get, you know, uh, Sean. should they not be able to get Sean Watson? Should any of the quarterbacks out there rumored to be traded or whatever, the Jets don't make any type of deals or so on and so forth, should they decide that maybe they they just want to hang on to Sam? They want to hang on to Sam one, one more deal. That's or, where uh, – maybe know, they'll meet in Washington. Yeah, that, that could be a possibility mm-hmm. too, depending on whether or not, you know, Sam Donald gets traded to Washington. So right now, you know, you got the kid there, Kent Heineke or, or – or, He's uh, hoping that Alex yeah, Smith Heineke. will come back. Yeah, he's he's hoping Alex Smith will come back for another year. It's still still a lot of a lot of moving pieces and a moving parts. I like that kid. I like him. He's a good yeah, team player. Crazy. I'm very excited, by the way, to see what receivers you guys have in this top five. Because there's That's a couple I could have went with, and I was like, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave that to the weapons hot crew. These are legit picks. Yeah, I, I got one for you, brother. I got yeah. one for you. Mm-hmm. you know, hey, listen. Don't give away any spoilers for the next segment. So we no, are. I'm, I'm enticing. I'm enticing. Wedding. Oh, yeah. Bring yeah. everybody back. Like, it's listen. Easy. I'm it. I'm it. I'm it. Uh, you know, we get <laughs> out. It's I'm it. 
I may be gone for the next segment. You best believe I'm tuning in now that he just said that. <laughs> nice. I got you covered, brother. You're going to okay. like it. All right. Okay. So since we're coming up against it, Declan, I know we only have you for a short amount of time. Please give out your social media information so fans of Weapons Hot can follow you and also give out your information about the sports hit list and that very new the, the new show you have coming to Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Yeah, so I'll give you guys a quick little roundup. Uh, my Instagram is my name, as you see on the uh, on the screen there. It's at Declan Krogman. If you want to follow me, I'll interact with some fans, whatever you got to do. That's mostly my personal page. I haven't even made a sports page yet. Um, Facebook, same name, obviously. Uh, you can find me in the sports hit list, probably talking some uh, talking some trash to some Jet fans like yourselves. Uh, actually, everybody. <laughs> but um, if we're going to uh, go with the show tomorrow, we got Monday, Mondays and Fridays, one o'clock, one to two on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Smoke and Mirrors, myself, Declan Krogman, uh, alongside the Polius brothers, Greg and Stefan Polius. Uh, we can't wait. We're excited. This, you know, this network has an extremely interactive and amazing fan base, um, and we can't wait to be on your phones, uh, on your tablets, spaceships, blimps, wherever, wherever you guys watch. Uh, <laughs> Watch That's the it. Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Get the app, as, by the way. As soon as I Declan, get it, I got you followed on on Instagram. Jets yeah, I got hit you right back. There we go. So we make magic happen. So when we come back on the other side of the commercial break, Mr. Kevin Jackson will be taking the lead over there for his white hot spotlight segment, and then we are going to start talking about our top fives, top five free agents that we believe the New York Jets should target. And you know what? The list is not as easy as you think it is, kid. Might surprise you. Might and surprise you. There's going to be some surprises you. over here. So, with that, ladies and gentlemen, we will catch you on the flip side. This is Weapons Hot, a New York Jets fan broadcast on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network, Sports War Radio, Snowman Digital Media, and any place else where you can get your New York Jets fix as we say goodnight to Declan Krogman. Thank you, Declan. And Appreciate thank you, you so much for coming on. Let's rock and roll. We'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace. It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Weapons Hot, a New York Jets podcast on the Sports War Radio Network, is brought to you by StatementGames.com. Want to take your fantasy game to the next level? Then make your statement. Weapons Hot has weekly tournaments during the NFL regular season that you, the fans, can join in on to win some really cool swag. Go to statementgames.com and create an account today. It costs you nada. Zippo, absolutely nothing. Just like that, you're ready to join in on any one of dozens of tournaments going on at all major sports. So are you ready to make your statement? If so, go to statementgames.com. Again, that's statementgames.com. Do current market conditions have you nervous? Our experienced team of financial professionals at Heritage Harbor Financial Associates understands that no two investors are alike. We all have different goals, needs, and appetites for risk. That's why the one-size-fits-all approach does not work, especially when planning for retirement. At Heritage Harbor Financial Associates, we analyze your unique investment style so that you can work toward your individual retirement goals on your terms. Heritage Harbor Financial Associates can help you take steps to reach your retirement goals by providing a wide array of financial financial products to fit your needs, even for the risk adverse. Give us a call at 631-331-6599 to learn more or to set up an appointment with one of our financial professionals. You can also find us on the web at hhfa.org or on Facebook at facebook.com slash hhfa.org. Our number again is 631-331-6599. That's 631-331-6599. Investments in stock bonds, and mutual funds and variable annuities are not FDIC insured and are subject to fluctuation in value market risk, including loss of principal heritage, Harbor Financial Associates offer securities through AXA Advisors, LLC, New York, New York, member FINRA, SIPC, annuity and insurance products offered through AXA Network, LLC. Edward Lehman has been a trusted insurance advisor for over 16 years with insurance solutions for auto, home, commercial, life, and retirement. He's located at 54 Sunnyside Boulevard, Suite H in Plainview. That's just 1,000 feet south of 495. Local agent, local advice. The time to think about insurance is before you need it. So do yourself a favor and before you pay your next insurance bill, give Ed and his team a call 516-935-3900 or visit them online at www.allstate.com forward slash EL. 
Edward H. Lehman Insurance is your trusted insurance advisor. Be fearless at MMA Long Island and Seituha Karate. Located at 28 Cold Court in Ronkonkoma, MMA Long Island is the martial arts school for you if you want to learn combat-proven techniques, build confidence, discipline, and self-esteem while learning real martial arts to fight back against bullies, predators, and peer pressure. MMA Long Island offers group and private lessons for all ages and levels in traditional goji ru karate, MMA, and self-defense. MMA Long Island is one of Long Island's most affordable martial arts schools. There are no promotion, belt, or membership fees, and family discounts are available. All classes are taught by 7th degree black belt sensei John Benedict with over 30 years teaching experience. So whether you want to get in the ring or protect yourself and your family, MMA Long Island can help you reach your goals. Visit MMALongIsland.com. That's MMALongIsland.com or call or text 516-381-9660. That's 516-381-9660. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Weapons Hot, a New York Jets fan broadcast here on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network, Sports World Radio, and Snowman Digital Media. CJ the Painkiller, D. Simone here. Got my boy Kevin Spotty Blackman Jackson on the other side over there, having a little blackout issue. And Jimmy the Reaper Jardine. There he is. And Jimmy the Reaper Jardine in the house from the top secret bunker. So now, as we talked to you guys before, we told you I teased you about this uh, coming into the break. It is now time. For our very own Kevin ba- Kevin Jackson, Mr. Spotty Blackman, as he takes you in the spotlight. In the spotlight with Kevin Jackson. Kevin Jackson. 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 All right. Spotlight tonight, brother. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, once again in the spotlight. Uh, tonight, it might surprise you a little bit. Um, Brian Poole. Uh, I'm, I'd like to throw Brian Poole in just because I think this is maybe something that we haven't really been discussing um, as much as 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 we have uh, maybe the quarterback position, or or pass rusher along those lines, but uh, Brian Poole is actually had was and and actually has been considered an integral part of what it is that we're doing in our defensive backfield, and I think that um, this is an this is an interesting time to discuss some of these 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 smaller uh, pieces, um, even though I don't think necessarily Brian Poole is a small piece um, over the course of the past couple seasons. Uh, with this play 17 games um uh had an interception return for a touchdown 15 yards um had a, had a sack a uh, few tackles for loss um a few quarterback hits so i mean the, the guy has been able to play all over the field not to mention um playing that integral position as a slot cornerback um i, I did a little comparison I, I saw some stats uh comparing him to buster screen who uh you know was manning that position a few seasons before we actually had brian Poole come in and uh, Buster Screen was just giving up all kind of yards and giving up all kind of touchdowns. And Brian Poole literally solidified that position. And actually, um, when we were talking about our defense overachieving just a few seasons ago, um, was was w- one of the main reasons why we were actually able to do some of that. So um, Brian Poole, you know, coming into a, a contract season, actually, uh, you know, kind of took a little bit of a hometown discount, I think, last season and taking the one year uh, five million dollar deal from Joe Douglas. Um, as kind of a prove it thing before we actually come into this new season where there's probably going to be quite a few uh, major contracts given out um, it was, with certain regards. Um, I'm interested in, in, in kind of if Brian Poole is actually going to be brought back here. I'm, I do think that there may be some other options that are available out there, but but it is a microcosm of of how wide open our cornerback room actually is at this point in time. Between Arthur Mollett, uh Bless Austin, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the young Bryce, who we're hoping is going to be able to turn the corner and and uh, you know be be a foundational piece in this defense going forward, Brian Poole is 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 an interesting uh, piece for me because I think that as part of uh, a veteran presence within that room, um, somebody that we know can actually play at a high level, um, who actually does have a little bit of a specialized skill set, considering not only is he really a, a great uh, you know coverage guy when he's healthy. Um, but also, uh, you know, is able to kind of uh, penetrate and, and and get some some in the backfield play also as well. Brian Poole's an interesting uh, point for me because I, I want to know, um, do you guys think that we should actually try to pay him and bring him back? Um, do we have other guys at the position that uh, might actually seem like better options for us going forward? And really, does uh, losing a guy like Brian Poole actually hurt our locker room? Um, you know, kind of considering it is going to be a new regime. 
It is going to be, uh, you know, a situation where the guys that are there are going to be making their mark on some of the young guys that we're going to bring in. And in my opinion, I think we should probably go after at least a couple of cornerbacks with, you know, between free agency and the draft. Um, I think Brian Poole is still an interesting name to keep, um, you know, in a, kind of in the mix with what it is that we do. Um, so Brian Poole, uh, again, not necessarily the, the, a, a huge statistical, you know, kind of point that I'm making here with, with having him in the spotlight this year, uh, this week, excuse me. But uh, I do think that coming into this season, Brian Poole could be, you know, again, like we were discussing last week with Marcus May, I think he can actually be a solidifying force. Um, he actually can be a, a great veteran presence to have in the locker room as well. Um, but, you know, there are still some questions about how much it is that he will cost and, you know, do we have other options available uh, that we think might be better than him at this point. Um, so, Brian, Brian Poole, um, I really do like the guy, I like what it is that he brought for us. Um, what do you guys think? I mean, am I off? Or what, do you, what do you guys think about Brian Poole being in the spot this week? Reaper, I'm going to hand this one off to you and then I'll finish it up. I love Brian Poole. I've loved Brian Poole since we signed him, even when the Jets Facebook groups were saying that he, like, they, they were so focused on outside cornerback help, they want Rebus Island 2.0. But that nickel corner slot was so important to us because, as we saw in 2020, tight ends absolutely killed our defense, yeah. Yeah. especially after Poole went down to IR. So, I, I think it's a vital position. I think it gets overlooked quite a bit because those lockdown corners are so flashy on the outside. I would love to get Brian Poole back. He he right after he went on IR, he he kind of alluded to the fact that he didn't want to come back, but that was also before we got Robert Sala yeah. and Ulbrich, and so I don't I don't know. Um, I I believe. Ulbrich was with Poole in Atlanta for a short amount of time. I'm not sure if that's accurate, but uh, been there. if there's if there is a connection there, I'm I'm sure that that Poole could have reconsidered. But if we have a chance to bring him back, I'm absolutely all for it. You know, I, I love Brian Poole. Yeah, I like Brian Poole too. Um, there was some question though at the end of the season because of how frustrated he was that he wasn't yeah. going to come back. So. The question is, now that Robert Sala is here, it's going to be a different regime. There's a different defensive coordinator. Does that possibly change his mind? You know, would he be willing to come back on, say, maybe a two-year, $15 million deal, you know, which would give him a, a sizable raise from what he was uh, from what he was making last year, I think. What yeah. is it? Uh, well, it was, it was a five-year. It was a one-year, $5 million deal that, that he signed just, just coming back in. But um, I, I think that that two-year, you know, $15 million is right around the range. Uh, that we would expect to bring him back at. And and I do, again, I, I, I think that the coaching changes, the front office changes that we've had, I, I really do think that it makes a huge difference in how it is that free agents are going to look at this team and look at how it is it's currently constructed. Brian Poole can come back in and, and, and just seeing what it is that they did in San Francisco with that defense would look and say, I could actually be an integral part of a really solid defense going forward. I know the locker room. I know some of the guys that are going to be here. Um, I believe, and, and I think you're right. I think I, I don't think that Ulbrich was the D, D coordinator in Atlanta when he was there, but I, I think he was on staff. So there may be That's a little bit I'm of thinking. a, yeah, I think there, he was, uh, you know, there may be a little bit of at least a familiarity, um, even if not uh, with, with that same, you know, kind of dynamic. Um, but look, I, if, if Brian Poole is the kind of guy that uh, you want to have in your locker room, you know what I'm saying? He's a dog. And, and, and we were really looking at him being one of the main reasons. And I think that going into the, you know, the 2021 season, it was why it is that we were saying that we really needed to get done what it is that we needed to, to bring him back. So when Joe Douglas actually got him on that one year, $5 million contract, it was a huge deal. I think everybody was like, yo, we, we really brought back one of our main pieces at what is a, you know, kind of a team friendly contract. So, you know, now I think we, we, we kind of got to pay him a little bit. Um, but I, I do think that, uh, you know, bringing him back, you know, just like I would say that that bringing May back or, or, or signing May to, you know, a long term deal, um, I think would be smart football moves. And I, I think in this case, bringing Brian Poole back is a smart football decision. 100 percent. OK, ladies and gentlemen, got some breaking news. Lino Cortina and Rockaway Archie have now finally joined the chat. So, hey, Lino. thank you. Hey, right? Where you guys so, been? What's so, going on? wanted to go ahead uh, and, and you know just make make that known because you know these are look, 
Lino did his Lino, Lino, Lino did his thing on After Dark the other night. Now you got to yes, give him, like, give, got to give him his props now. Yes, he did. <laughs> now, I love that guy. Um, here, here's the thing. I like Brian Poole. Um, I, I think that we definitely should be able to, um, should be able to get him back now that there's a change in the regime. Um, I think two years, $15 million is a fair deal. I think you could bring him in. He could definitely hold it down. So there's a, there's a ton of different things that we can do. Um, but I, I kind of like Brian Poole. I wouldn't mind bringing him back. I think that he'd be able to help the younger guys uh, just like he started to do last year. Um, you know, ha- having some of that continuity, but you know, ag- again, we don't exactly know what the free agent market is going to bring. There's a lot of nice quarterbacks, uh, cornerbacks out here that I really would like to go after. Um, some of which, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go at when we start talking about our top fives and believe it or not, I think this is a perfect segue to start with our top fives. What do you guys think? Yeah, man, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So now. What we are going to do is, Reaper, I'm going to start you off. We'll tee you up. Okay. Then after you, we're going to go to Jax, and then I will follow up the rear. So I mean, I'm, I'm good. I was I was hoping that we would go this way because uh, Jimmy's been teasing and got my mouth watering over here. Let's, let's get it <laughs> in. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, he's been, he's been teasing our, 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 our <laughs> listeners about, about something, you know, very, very special here. So let's, uh, let's, let's, let's go out there. And uh, we'll we'll do it, and then shortly after we do that, I want to get to some of these con- uh, get to some of these comments in here. And again, I want to thank everybody who's watching us live. Anybody who's uh, who's commenting in the comments and stuff, please keep them on. I'm going to try to get to everybody's comment on the air. Thanks, I promise, guys. I'll do the best I can. You guys are the best. So Reaper, take it away. You have the lead. So I I, I listed my top five in order of importance. Where I want you know like who we must go after versus who out of the five, who we least should go after, but still is important to take a look at. So I'm going to go backwards. And for number five, we're going to look at Romeo Okwara, defensive end from Detroit. I like this kid, 26 years old, finished 2020 with 10 sacks, 44 tackles, two forced fumbles in 2020. He's going to cost right around $10 million. So when you start talking about defensive ends, he also, he's a natural down defensive end. He's used to the four, three. So that's important. Um, but you're talking about like Yannick Ngakwe, Matt Judon, Bud Dupree. Like these guys are going to cost 15 million plus yeah. on the edge just because there's very few of them and they still hold immense value going into free agency, even in 2021. I like Okwara and I like him because he's going to be cost effective. And I really think with Sala being the head coach, defensive minded guy, even though he's not, you know, he obviously he's already said he's not going to call plays. He's not going to do any of that, but you have to think that that Robert Sala is going to focus on defense. I think there's going to be a 60, 40 split offense to defense um, in the draft. So I think we're going to go after an edge rusher. Personally, I love Patrick Jones in the edge from Pitt, Uh, but I want somebody that's going to be serviceable, if not even above average. And I think Romeo Okwara, I think he can, I think he can really shine in our defense at the, at the edge position. We've talked a lot about corners. So coming in at number four, Richard Sherman from San Francisco, this is probably not going to be a surprise. This is one of the guys that we've talked about um, in past shows, but the reason that I want Richard Sherman leadership, 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 the guy brings it. He is a culture changer. He will run through a brick wall for Robert Sala, and he will teach the young guys on this Jets football team that they also want to run through a brick wall for Sala. Yeah, man. And that is vital. He's lost a step. He understands he's lost a step. He is willing to play free safety. He's willing to play slot corner. He wants to be an effective piece wherever we need him, and that is huge. And that show that that in and of itself is showing the young guys, hey, look at me. I'm a seasoned vet. I'm an all pro. But here's what I'm willing to do for the team. That right there is culture change. Number three, kind of a very, very under the radar guy. I like Rashad Hill guard out of Minnesota. He was a depth piece in Minnesota. He only played about 125 snaps 
in 2020, but he was graded out at a 72.4 on PFF. So he allowed no penalty or he allowed no sacks. He had zero penalties in 2020. It's a small sample size, but still 125 snaps when you're not used to being in there every single play. I absolutely love that fact that no sacks, no penalties. And these guys, no injury history either. Okwara the same way. No real injury injury history to speak of. So I know Chapa was in the comments talking about how Joe Douglas likes uh, low injury type players. I love Rashad Hill for that. Let him come onto this team. You can get him for two, three million dollars. Give him a one year prove it deal for two or three million dollars. Let him fight for a spot. If he's a depth piece, then he's a solid depth piece as he's proved in Minnesota. Now, the moment you guys have been waiting for, my wide receiver pick of the 2021 free agency. Drum roll, I'm gonna please. hit you guys. <laughs> I am gonna hit you guys with Corey Davis, wide receiver out of Tennessee. Wow. Interesting. The reason I am hitting you with Corey Davis, he's just coming off his rookie contract. He's 26 years old, going to be 27. He played 76% of the offensive snaps for Tennessee, came out with 984 yards receiving, five touchdowns. His yards per catch is 15.1 yards per catch. He's averaging 70.29 yards per game. And this is on an offense that was dramatically dependent on Derrick Henry. This was not a passing team. This was a Derrick Henry offense in Tennessee. And he still was able to do that. He is a hands receiver. He attacks the ball. He doesn't allow the ball to come into his frame. He is one of the best route runners in 2017 when he came out. Coming out of college, he was one of the best route runners. He has a very explosive first step, even though he's right at about a 4-3 to a 4-4-5 runner. He's still an outside receiver. He gets great separation on the outside because of his first step and because of his quick side-to-side motion. He doesn't telegraph his routes. Top-notch route runner would be one of the best route runners on our team right now. So Corey Davis, wide receiver, Tennessee. And again, Chapo is for you. Never been injured. He's played a ton. Never misses games. Never misses snaps. When they call his number, he's there. So I love him. And last but not least, number one, and and I I put this guy at number one because of the fact that I found out what his market value actually is going to be. Corey Lindsley, center from Green Bay. Green Bay has already said they're pretty much letting him walk. They're letting him test the waters in free agency. Give Corey Lindsley $12 million a year for three years, three years, 36 million. He had zero penalties. He allowed one sack in 2020. Get this, guys. He's played over 90% of his career snaps in Green Bay. No injury history to speak of. He knows defensive shifts. He understands what the defense is showing him. That is our quarterback for the offense. I also think that we're going to go another interior offensive lineman, whether it's like a Creed Humphrey or a Wyatt Davis. But Corey Lindsley being able to teach these young kids what to do on, on the offensive line. I think that with him leading the pack and with him sharing his knowledge, even with the roster on the O-line that we have now, I think they, they go from a mid twenties offensive line to a top 15 offensive line with Corey Lindsley wow. running the show out there. And, and just, you talk about Joe Douglas getting the reins for the team overall you give Corey Lindsay the reins on that offensive line. You let him run the show on that offensive line, and you're going to see something wild. Yeah. You're going to see an offense that we have not seen for 10 years on the New York Jets. So that's my top five, guys. What do you think? Look, I, I have no qualms with any of them because I really think that you're making great points. Obviously, statistically, you're doing your thing. I'm, but, uh, you know, just thinking about – and we talk about how many holes this team has, right? But we also, in that same kind of conversation, say that we're really not that far away from really being, you know, a, a competitive, you know, a foundationally sound team. And I've said these, it and, for and, weeks. Exactly. Well, we've, we've been talking about this for years, and, and CJ, yep. you know, CJ can back this up. Um, we really aren't that far away. And some of these guys, man, I mean, they might not be, you know, the huge names, but they could be honestly linchpin pieces, guys that are really foundationally strong, structurally strong, technically strong. You bring them in and you add them to what is it, an an evolving and an emerging locker room situation, um, an outstanding, you know, young and interactive coaching situation. And I mean, who knows? The sky's the limit, man. I'm really excited about these. A lot of those picks, Jim, yeah, 100% spot on. I'm, I'm, I'm in. Let's get it. 
All right, Kevin, your turn. All right, uh, mine is is going to be kind of in that same vein. Now, I, I'm I'm going to spend a lot of time on defense. Um, I'm a defensive guy, Jim. You already know we we, we talk about this all the time, but um, I think that cornerback and edge rusher are really those are those are under discussed. We we've spent a lot of time talking about quarterback and wide receiver and all of those things and all of the big names, and uh, you know we, we all know where we stand on in that regard. But um, the Yannick Ngakwe that that name keeps popping up. Um, me personally, my number five guy is Carl Lawson, um, linebacker out of Cincinnati. I I cannot tell you again how much it is that I like this guy, Carl Lawson. 6'2", 265 pounds, I think he is. Um, uh, 31 and a half inch arms, 10 and, and, and 10 and a half inch hands, a 25 years old young kid. Um, out of the, the 17 some odd sacks that the Bengals had last season, um, he, I think he accounted for six by himself. So we're talking about a guy who actually is very specialized at being an edge rusher, a pass rusher. And what we have been missing on this team, and I think it goes back to, to Abraham, we've, we've talked about that a few times, is a dedicated, functionally special edge rusher. And this guy, I think, actually has an opportunity to be it. So um, I, I would always recommend going back and look at the films. If you guys, you guys disagree, um, throw it down in the chat. We'll, we'll discuss it as we go. But Carl Lawson is one of my guys, man. I really like that dude. Um, next up on my list, and I think this is going to probably surprise some, Tyus Bowser, uh, the linebacker from Baltimore. Look, Baltimore has got some guys on that on that defense, man. I'm telling you right now. And uh, while, uh, again, I'm looking at kind of young guys, 6'3", 245, 25 years old, had seven sacks over the course of the past two seasons, but also had three interceptions to go with it. So he can be a solid addition, not only as far as, you know, being uh, getting that pressure up front, but also dropping back into coverage, man. It, it, he's maybe an, a guy that's been flying a little bit under the radar. But uh, if, if what it is that we saw Robert Sala do in – uh, San Francisco over the course of these past two seasons, especially when you saw guys going down after injury and you got your main guys going down and you have some of these guys that are coming in that again, aren't necessarily household names, but they're playing their parts and they're playing it to a high level. I think this kid Bowser specifically has the talent, has the ability to step in and, and almost like what it is that we've seen from, from Hewitt and, 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 you know, Burgess and, and those guys, I think he's a little bit better athlete than those guys in particular, which means I think that he can actually be a, a, a step above what it is that those guys brought, but those guys were some of the linchpins on our defense. And I really think that Tyus Bowser has an opportunity if you put him in the right situation to really kind of excel and be a guy that, uh, you know, we're looking in a couple of years and saying that when we brought him in, that was a really big difference in how it is that our defense uh, kind of stepped up. So I look forward to seeing him also. Um, this Great is gonna name be, too. Yeah, Great you know name. what? I love it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that, right? Okay. Um, this I think this might might surprise some folks, but uh, I know uh, Jim wanted to bring in uh, Richard Sherman, and and I'll be honest with you. I love Richard Sherman. I think we've all kind of expressed, uh, you know, you know, some excitement about the possibility of him coming in, um, especially because of his ties to to, to the head coach. Um, but I like Bashad Breeland. Um, just just as a cornerback, man. I, I'm I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I, I went back and I watched some of his film, and 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 one game in particular, it, it kind of stood out to me, um, was when against Buffalo, um, played both sides played inside and outside, played, and, and I, if, if, if I remember correctly, I think I saw him cover almost every single receiver uh, that they had. And that type of flexibility, is, especially, especially with a, in a veteran leader, 29 years old, you know, only had two interceptions last season, but um, it can be very highly functional in man coverage, um, could probably, you know, teach and, and, and be extremely functional also in any zone uh, coverages that, that we might throw. Um, uh, like I said, can play well inside and outside, either side. Um, he's a good tackler in the open field, really strong, uh, you know, guy in that regard as well. So um, I, I like bringing a guy like that into this locker room, especially when we have uh, and we're more than likely going to have a very young nucleus at that position. Um, going forward and it kind of ties in also to what it is that I was saying about uh, Brian Poole being in our spotlight this weekend um, because when you add another guy like that that does kind of add some veteran presence but it also is um, a guy that can functionally improve what it is that we get from our rookies and from our young players going forward so um, doesn't necessarily have to be a break the bank type of a contract um, already at 29 years old I think you can kind of get away with the two year three year deal um, if you pay him decent money and uh, you know again if you front load it 
doesn't necessarily have to be somebody that's a long-term solution for you, but I think has the ability to quite possibly be maybe longer than, than maybe a two or three year kind of a guy here with us. Um, so, so I wanted to keep that in mind also. Um, also, um, there, there's, there's a couple other things because I've been kind of bouncing around about this. Um, there's a really long list of, of, of guys, you know what I mean? There's like, um, I, I was talking about Tyus Bowser, talking about Yannick Ngakwe, talking about possibly Vic Beasley, um, Bud Dupree, I know we talked about, um, T.Y. Hilton. I mean, these, these names, these are names, you know what I'm saying, of guys that, you know, are, are going to be available. But I mean, are, it, how does Joe Douglas see some of these guys? Kenny Galladay, who I think is, is you know, I, I think is really... I think maybe more available than what people think they would be. I don't know if Detroit is going to want to, you know, kind of pay him what it is that I think that he's going to, to warrant. Um, and, and that, that kind of situation is in flux, but I really like Kenny Galladay. One, one of my favorites, uh, you know, in this, in this free agent uh, period coming up. So if I was going to add somebody to the list, I, it would probably be out of between him and T Y. I think both of those guys actually offer something um, that we haven't had and that we kind of need here going forward our wide receiver room is going to be um it's going to be a little bit in flux i think this season so it, it's going to be interesting to see how that works out um my my, my final guy and i i kind of had a, a 1a and 1b there with uh with ty and with uh kenny um but i want to look at alex mack um alex mack the center for uh from from uh from cleveland i i, I think they're saying that he's going to end up being a free agent i think they're, they're gonna they're gonna part ways with him um functionally I think there may be better options. I'm, and I'm just, I'm just going to keep it real. The guy from uh, the guy from green Bay, we were just talking about a little while ago. Um, uh, what, what, yeah, uh, exactly. Excuse me. Uh, Lindley. And I, I was trying to remember his name, Jim, but uh, that, that is exactly the guy who I was thinking of. Um, but, but there's going to be a lot of competition for some of those guys. There's going to be a lot of, you know, there's going to be a lot of contract, uh, you know, opportunities uh, for these guys, but also um our line is maybe unproven at this point. And if you have guys that are coming towards the end of their career, I mean, um, they may want to go to situations that are a lot, maybe less in flux than what it is that we have here. Um, understanding that we do have a young line, uh, th the star of our offensive line is, is going to be a, a second year player um, with Makai Becton. And then we've had a whole bunch of kind of journeymen. So McGovern, the, the McGovern pick didn't pan out. I think uh, George Fant, may be criminally underrated at this point. I, I just, I really don't want to, I, I always see guys questioning if, if, if he's a long-term solution, but uh, not playing the position that he played last season and coming in and playing as admirably as he did in, in spots, and then only having a year under his belt where he's actually been able to practice and improve his craft. I think George Fan is going to end up being maybe an upper echelon piece on this offensive line if he can stay healthy. So Look, um, free agency is, is, is kind of a crazy season because there's always a lot of name. Um, but we, we've, as Jets fans, you know, we kind of been a little gun shy because we've brought in guys with names that uh, haven't produced, you know, and just uh, think about the cornerback uh, uh, contracts that we've given out these past few seasons. I'm um, even going back to, to when we actually paid Revis to, uh, to check out on us at the end of his career and then um, whatever that, that guy's name is that we paid, you know, 50 million to who ended up being a scrub. Um, anyways, I digress. Free agency is going to be interesting, guys. Which one um, are you talking about? Because we've got a yeah, few. Yeah, like a lot of them. That's, that's, you know, it's kind of a blanket statement, all of them, right? <laughs> all of them. Um, but our rookies, man, I, I'm really more impressed by what it is that we've got from our young guys. Arthur Mallette, I think, is going to do well. Um, Bless Austin, I think, is going to do well. Uh, we've, we've got the. Uh, uh, Bryce, who I, I think is is probably gonna you know end up being a, a much better uh, pick uh, than I think most people are are, are giving us credit for. So, um, free agency for me is interesting. I hope you guys uh, you know kind of approve of my picks. Uh, I know we can kind of we can go round table with all of these names, but I don't know. I think all of those guys can bring something to the table that will improve uh, what it is that we have here. <laughs> well said. Let me tell you. So. Because we're coming up against it, I'm actually going to give the first half of my list now. And then on the other side of the break, I'm going to give the second half of my list. Oh, he's going to tease this thing? Yeah. Okay. I'm okay. okay. But, but, but here's the thing. Because, you know, we can't do two and a half and two and a half. <laughs> I'm going to go top six. Okay. Ooh. Oh, there Only you go. Because yeah. you I got to make an extra one. Yeah, yeah, because I, I kind of cheated. I'll, I'll be honest. I, 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 I kind of cheated a little bit. I got nah, to make it easy. Three on one side and three on the other. But here's – I'll a, just 
I'll give one extra after the break when you're done, CJ. Yes. So I'll give yeah. one extra. No, actually do it now. You know why? Because we're coming up against it. So go Okay, for it. so this isn't a – I, I can make this really quick. This isn't going to be a free agency pick. This is going to be a trade pick because New Orleans is in salary cap hell. I know that everybody was saying in the chat that Pittsburgh is. They're actually only negative $7 million, so they can get out of that fairly yeah, easily. Easy. But New Orleans couple, needs couple to gut their roster. We need to get cornerback Marshawn Lattimore – from New Orleans, period. That's gonna we'll, we can hold them over. I think um, I think we can offer probably a mid round pick, third or a fourth, and pick them up so that that way they can clear the ten million out of their out of their cap. And uh, Marshawn Lattimore, hundred percent lockdown corner. There's the outside guy that you want. So yes, Marshawn yes. Lattimore is my extra pick. All right, cool. So then I'm gonna I love, I love uh, corners. Bring them in. I'm gonna go with my bottom three. OK, now I know a lot of people are probably like, eh, well, what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, here's my bottom three. Here's one guy that interests me quite a bit. And actually, believe it or not, he was the subject of our weapons hot in the spotlight tonight. And that's Brian Poole. Mm-hmm. Brian Poole, good soldier, brought him in on a good deal. No reason why you can't bring him back. Brand new regime or a brand new regime. And I think that he will still be able to add a little bit of consistency to this secondary. That being said, the guy played with his hair on fire. He played very well, and he was very serviceable for what he was asked to do in a Greg Williams defense. He actually started to come on a little bit more once Greg Williams was fired. So maybe Greg Williams was possibly holding the defense back a little bit because we actually started to see the defense play a little bit better after Greg Williams was fired. So who knows? But – I definitely would bring Poole back. He's familiar with everything. He's familiar with the Jets organization and could, of course, help to bridge the gap between people coming in and some of the rookies that are, that may not have a clue as to what's going on, considering this is going to be a brand new regime, a brand new, uh, you know, a, a brand new paint job, so to speak, on the uh, uh, on the car here. So Brian Poole would be my uh, would be one. Next person that I want to bring in, and I know a lot of people are probably going to look at me a little bit, a, a, a little bit nuts on this one, but I, I kind of feel a little bit strongly about this one. Now, if you go and take a look at courtesy of NFLTradeRumors.com, they have their top 100 2021 free agent list. Here's a guy that's on my radar that really does not get talked about a lot. And that's offensive tackle Taylor Morton from Carolina. Wow. Now, here's a guy who played very well despite Carolina's struggles. Kept himself healthy for most of the year. Very serviceable tackle. And I think that given the right circumstance, I think that he has the possibility to flourish. Now, the only thing that does scare me is he's 27. So normally when they start hitting the late 20s, early 30s is when you start seeing the decline in their um, uh, in, in their technique, so to speak. All right. Now, it all depends on what the Jets want to do with the right tackle, you know, situation right now. And I think that Taylor Morton would actually be a good option at the right tackle position because you've already got left taking care of what Mackay Beckton. You put a solid kid up in there in Morton, who's a veteran. He's a little bit salty. He knows how to play the game and could also fortify it, which could definitely help out. Now, that being said, I want to flip on over to my final guy. And then after this, we're going to be going to a quick commercial break. Now, a lot of people have been talking about the backup quarterback position. Okay. Reason being is because Joe Flacco's not going to be there. We still don't know what James Morgan is. I, I highly doubt we're bringing in a David Fails or some other guy that, you know, nobody's ever heard of from the, the, the Alliance of American Football or the XFL or whoever. But here's a guy who I, I actually would not mind bringing in, taking a flyer on. And I know everyone's probably going to laugh at me about this, but I would go after Jacoby Brissett. Like it. And the reason being is because he's a veteran quarterback, yeah. a very mobile quarterback, still young enough where he could still observe this system. 
And whoever you have at quarterback, whether that be Deshaun Watson, whether that be Zach Wilson, if we draft him at number two, or Trevor Lawrence, or whoever we decide to draft at number two, or we have Sam Darnold. You know. Okay. You have a veteran back there that will that can legitimately push whoever your quote unquote starter is to the brink. And actually bring them in and create an actual quarterback competition. And the reason why I like Brissett is because he's played in some in some pretty high powered, uh, high, uh, high powered uh, organizations. He's played for the Patriots, played for the Colts. Even though he struggled a little bit, he still had some some uh, so, some good run under Frank Reich. He's put up decent numbers, Jacoby has. Right. So I think that having a solid quarterback who can legit go in there and actually compete would be a good idea for the New York Jets to have. That's your insurance policy. Because if, say, Sam Darnold, they end up rolling out Sam Darnold and he doesn't get traded, okay? Sam has a bad day. (laughs) You know fans are going to be booing his ass off the field faster than, than anything. Really okay. just gonna say, I like be Sam. Brutal. But, it's going to be yeah, brutal. I, I right. like Sam, but or bringing, bringing if, Sam back would be the worst case scenario. If you have Sam going in there and struggling, okay, you could potentially have that. All right. For me, what I want to see the New York Jets do is have a solid one two punch at quarterback. And I think that if you were to go and draft a Zach Wilson at two, okay. Let the two of them fight it out. Go, let's legitimately have a quarterback competition where you fight to get your position. Not that it's handed to you because of your draft status. Thanks. Rookie, free agent, veteran, I don't care. You are in a spot on this team because of how you perform on the football field. Not because of where you came from. Not because of who you know. Not because of anything. All right. You're going to get a spot on this Robert Sala team because you earned it. Period. All right. And I think that having a Jacoby Brissett in the building, knowing that he can be ready to rock in a Mac, in a Matt LaFleur offense. To me, I would feel a little bit better about my quarterback situation going forward, at least as a backup, at least as a backup is concerned. All right. So those, those are my bottom three. I'm going to leave it at that. We're going to have the top three when we get back from our commercial break. So, ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to Weapons Hot, a New York Jets fan broadcast here on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network, Sports War Radio, and Snowman Digital Media. We will catch you on the flip side. Don't change that dial. Keep your comments coming. We love you guys. We'll be right yes. back. Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there? What about jobs? No? Now try your basement. There's a pair of overalls that overall you're not so into anymore. A perfectly good laptop that hasn't sat in your lap in months. And even more stuff, but still no jobs? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait, no longer needed? That can't be right. Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed, and they're the stuff inside your stuff, even inside that winter coat that moved with you to Phoenix. Our job is to unlock those jobs, and it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide job training for people right here in your community. So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help create jobs. And isn't that worth parting with the leftover guitar from your 80s cover band? Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. Find your nearest donation center at Goodwill.org. A message from Goodwill and the Ad Council. Dear John, I was hoping it wouldn't come to this, but you've left me no choice. I'm leaving. Uncontrolled high blood pressure is really serious, and lately you seem to really not care. I've been there for you since day one, and I know you think I'm going to keep ticking. But no, my friend, I can quit whenever I want. Why can't we get back to the good times when we were more active and ate more healthy foods and you checked on me every once in a while? Is that too much to ask? I don't want to leave, but unless you stop ignoring me, what else am I supposed to do? Remember, when I quit, you quit. Sincerely, 
your heart. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Doing the minimum to control your high blood pressure isn't doing enough. High blood pressure can lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get your blood pressure to a healthy range before it's too late. Find out how at heart.org slash blood pressure. Check, change, control. A message from the American Heart Association, the American Stroke Association, and the Ad Council. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Jason Derulo. I love that music connects to people all over the country. But unfortunately... So does something else. Childhood hunger. 15 million kids struggle with hunger right here in America. And yet, every year, billions of pounds of surplus food in the U.S. go to waste instead of going to the children in need. Feeding America is working to change this. The Feeding America nationwide network of food banks rescues this surplus of food to help provide meals to families in virtually every community in the United States, including yours. But they just can't do this alone. Join me in the fight against hunger in America. For more information on what you can do to get involved, visit feedingamerica.org. That's feedingamerica.org. Together we can solve hunger. Together, we're feeding America. A message from Feeding America and the Ad Council. (laughs) Hey, everyone. You know, let's all stop what we're doing right now and take a moment. That felt good, huh? Just like that, we had a nice, special sort of moment. Together. Of course, they don't all need to be quiet moments to be special. They could be loud moments, goofy moments, sporty moments, dorky moments. Moments where we talk or walk or just hang out. It doesn't really matter. They all count. Because every time dads like us take a moment like that to spend with our kids, well, it's pretty momentous. <laughs> Sounds like somebody agrees. So let's take a moment to make a moment. Today, call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Music is a bridge between the material and the spiritual. My name is Harvey Lauer, and I'm 82. As a blind person, you have to be aware that nobody can tell you what you can or can't do. You really have to try things. My folks got me a little radio in 1940, and that was the best Christmas present I ever got. When I was 11 years old is when I started to uh, play music, play the piano and then the accordion, and then the cello. My wife, who was also blind, was a good cook. When she died, that's when I started Meals on Wheels. America, let's do lunch. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. All right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Weapons Hot, a New York Jets fan broadcast here on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network, Sports War Radio, Snowman Digital Media, and quite frankly, any place where you get your New York Jets news. CJ, the painkiller, Simone here, Mr. Kevin Jackson over there on the other side of the glass, and from the top secret bunker over there in Idaho, Jimmy the Reaper, Jardine. I just want you guys to know that this guy right here, this guy right up here, Ooh. That's the coach that shall not be named. We're studying him. <laughs> We're studying to find out what not to do moving forward. Right. Dissect him. <laughs> mm-hmm. Forget to fit a, put a few parts back in also while you're in. Oh, please. <laughs> I don't even think there are any parts that exist that could fix that. I'm surprised no. I'm not putting it in the fire pit and lighting yeah. it on fire, but that's just me. All right. So now it's time for the top half. All right. And everyone's been asking in the chats. They've been throwing different suggestions in and stuff like that. And look, what is one of the one of the things I'm going to ask you guys that the New York Jets lack most desperately? I mean, we could pick several, but what's the one thing edge that rush. we've had the biggest issue with? Edge, edge rush, and I, and I got to say corner. Um, we, we gave up quite a few, you know, chunk plays last season. You know, our third down uh, plays where we really could least, could could least afford to have them happening. And they're like 16 and 20 yard, you know, kind of third down play. So, yeah. 
edge and corner. Those I think those two are are kind of my one 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 A right now. I think right, an Jimmy. edge rush. I think an edge rush puts less pressure on our corners. So exactly. I think if we can exactly. get if we can give the quarterback less time to throw with an edge rush, it helps our corners are are better than we think. Yeah. All right. Well, that's, that's a good point. That's a good point. Here's a name that I'm actually going to throw at you, and I know a lot of people are probably going to be like, what the hell? Why would you even think this? And I got to pull his name up because I scrolled down a little bit and I ended up passing him. All right. One of the guys that I like, especially with Baltimore, Baltimore having a little bit of cap issues, they are going to have to let some people go. One of the guys that I like, and of course, Ray, Ray Burgess, <laughs> Ray Burgess and, Rock, and Rockaway Archie chiming in with two very funny. Uh, Rockaway Archie says, cojones. <laughs> and Ray Burgess uh, says, talent, uh, uh, along with two crying, laughing faces. We have talent, guys. <laughs> uh, we have. <laughs> we do. We have more than what people uh, we, uh, we have talent. The problem is, is that we had the wrong guy pushing the buttons. Correct. Now the question is, is that we need to go at, we need to go, we have, hopefully we have the right guy pushing the buttons. Now we just need to get more talent. We don't need to replace talent. We need to add talent on this team. So, and shout out to Daniel Smith for that line, because you know what? He's mentioned that a couple of weeks in a row on the, on his Jets Guru show. Yeah. And I want to give him some credit for that. But a guy that I have my eye on that I would like the Jets to go after, age might be a little bit of a factor, but I still think he could still come in and perform. Matthew Judon, edge rusher from Baltimore. He's a guy, high motor, high intensity. I think you could go ahead and put a plug and play him in this, uh, in this defense, in this 4-3 defense, and I think he could be successful here. So that's somebody here. That, it would, that I'd like the Jets to go after. Now, Baltimore's defense got a lot of guys, man. <clears throat> yep, they do. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I don't know what it is, but they just, they turn out, they, they churn out uh, uh, defensive guys like a motor. Yeah. So, you know, it's it, it, it's crazy on there. Now, you linebackers. Guys, yeah. you guys were talking about corner, okay? Now, I heard you guys mention Richard Sherman, so I'm not going to go and mention that because, because I love – uh, I love the idea of bringing Richard Sherman in. But here's another guy that I would like to bring in from that San Francisco secondary, and that's Jason Verrett. And the reason why I'd like to bring in Jason Verrett is because he played with Richard Sherman, knows the system, and can actually teach the young kids the nuances. Plus, he's not a bad corner himself. So he's actually got some pretty decent stats going, going on over there. So I think that he would definitely be an upgrade for what we have. OK, moving forward. And plus, uh, you know, you're going to see guys like Javelin Gidry, Bryce Hall get their opportunities for the for the kick at the can. But on the other side, you still need that veteran presence to kind of rein everybody in. And I think that both Sherman and Verrett can provide exactly that. So now here's my whipped cream and cherry on top. And I know everybody keeps crying about wide receiver. Wide receiver. We need a wide receiver. We need a wide receiver. We need a wide receiver. Okay, we've heard names thrown out there like Juju Smith-Schuster, Chris Godwin. Okay, Curtis Samuel. Here's a guy I kind of like that I really don't think anybody is talking about, and I really don't understand why. But Demarcus Robertson from Kansas City, 26 years old, played with Patrick Mahomes. And even though he didn't have one of his greatest games in the Super Bowl, still a really good receiver. Now, I understand you when you got Patrick Mahomes throwing you the ball, anybody can make anything look easy. But he could probably come in and instantly give a little bit more speed and fire to this wide receiving core. So this is a guy that I would have my eye on personally. I think it's an under the radar move, kind of an uh, underrated wide receiver move that I think again could bolster this wide receivers core. Now I keep hearing about Crowder getting cut and so on, or we should, we should cut Crowder. There was a couple of comments in about 23 drafting Kadarius Tony. 
Okay, look, I love Kadarius Tony from Florida. I would love the Jets to get him at 23. Yeah. But I'm not cutting Crowder. I'm not cutting the single most productive receiver that the Jets have currently on the roster right now on the contract to save $10 million. Nope. No, I'm not doing it. So for those of you who want to cut Crowder and feel like that $10 million could go someplace else, this is the difference between replacing talent and adding talent. Crowder, talent. On the contract, on the field, guess what? You need to add people to that talent that's currently on the field. That's how you build the team, okay? We don't take Crowder and put in somebody else who's not going to give you the production that Crowder is going to give you, okay? So this is the reason why <laughs> Rob Gonzalez try, chiming right in. Adios, Crowder. No. No, 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 because you you don't get rid of a top five slot receiver in the NFL. He was a top five, top ten slot receiver in this Jets offense. Yeah, you don't this remove is, that. It's not a it's not a zero sum game. These guys are saying, yeah, there's, there's there's guys that we can bring and that'll be better than him, but will they be as good as him? realistically in what it is that we've done he's already shown that he can do it here so i mean you cut him and then you open up another hole which means that the guy that you bring in is now a replacement he's not an addition right that we need we need additions we don't need replacements per se we need to stack and add and build talent you you get rid of a guy that we know for a fact can actually play at a high level to bring in an unknown guy a rookie guy uh, in particular and then still have the requirements of building around that rookie that's right. And plus, on top of it, you know, a, a, a lot of people in the comments, um, Ray Berg is chiming in, Brandon Cooks, Crowder for the same money. Um, uh, he he talked about getting that. Um, there's a couple of people that don't like my pick. I'm sorry. Um, Godwin, Mims and Berrios is a, is a, is a, a, a trio that's being thrown in. Yeah, uh, but you're gonna have to get Godwin out of Tampa Bay, and that's not happening. Yeah, you already know that. Especially not with, especially not with Tim. No, um, Godwin not, came, no, Godwin came out and said that he's not testing free agency. He wants to stay in Tampa right. Bay. So, so I mean, Chris, Chris Godwin is as good as off the board. Now, yeah. uh, I, I know it's very interesting. A lot of people were talking about Curtis Samuel. They're talking about Juju Smith Schuster. The Jets still don't have a legit number one. And then, of course, there's the quite the big question mark of Allen Robinson. Is Allen Robinson going to get franchise tag? Is Chicago going to let him walk? I think somebody else is going to pay. Will the Jets be able to get him if he does? I mean, I know he'll come here if we end up getting Deshaun Watson, but that's not a given. You know, would he come here if the money is right? And I think that he would come here if the money is right. When did Berrios become as good as Crowder anyway? No, 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 it never no, happened. It's not as good as Crowder. I'm no, sorry. It's, it's I know a lot of people in the comments talking about that. No, Berrios is not as good as Crowder. Just because we like the kid doesn't mean that he's actually played you, at that level. That's just not that's not how it works. You guys remember the punter pass or the punt keep a punt segment that I was yeah. doing, and right. I had Berrios as a, being as a like a one hundred percent keep, and I just think that he might get squeezed out eventually. But uh, Braxton Berrios is, and I and I said it before, Braxton Berrios is that. Wayne Krebet type of receiver, not the talent of a Wayne Krebet, but he's that type of a receiver. And I love that about him. But when you're talking about bringing in a number one wide receiver, I think Allen Robinson is going to be a tag and trade scenario for Chicago. They want to get something for him, but they, they're not going to pay him. So I don't want to give up draft capital to get Allen Robinson in. I think we need to look at who is going to be a receiver that we are going to be able to get for cash, period. No draft picks. And Godwin Robinson off the board. Just kind of get that out of your head, guys. Just to kind of piggyback off that also. Um, as far Ray, as I do as, want Hendrickson, sorry. Yeah, as, well, no, as far as, as, far as uh, Reeves is concerned. Uh, I, 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 Ray, Ray Mallard chimed in. Sorry, Jax. Um, Ray Mallard chimed in. So no one wants Hendrickson from the Saints. Yeah, we do, but here's the thing. 
that's not we're a free through, agent. We're going through top five that are not that obvious. Yeah. Like everybody could go and say, yeah, we want Dooney. We want Robinson. We want this. We want that. And, and, we're not and, here to actually just pick five names out of the air. Yeah, we're here and, to actually pick five names that people need to go look at. Yeah. yeah. To, Jim, to Jim's point, he's, he's not a free agent anyway. We have to trade for him. And, and that's that's kind of not what we're looking at here. Also, let, let, let's kind of also realize that some of the the because we're, we're talking about receivers in particular, we also kind of need to kind of keep focus on what we're going to do in the tight end position as well, because that, mm -hmm. you know, that that's a, a effective, uh, effectively adding another wide receiver or another receiver, excuse me, even if it's not a wide receiver, effectively adding another receiver um, to that, you know, to, to that mix. So um, again, let, let, let's, let's not hurt ourselves because we're talking about not spending money when we actually have money to spend. Mm -hmm. Right. We have money to spend. This isn't where we're going into this, you know, up against it where, where we, you know, we have to be frugal. We can't, we have to pinch pennies. We shouldn't be pinching pennies as of right now. Pinching pennies is how it is that you end up with, you know, kind of an, a John Itzik situation. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Let's not, let's, we already saw how that worked out. Let's not do or, that. Or even a Mike McCagnan situation where he was bargain basement shopping, but yet threw like $86 million at, at, at CJ Mosley, who we got three and a half quarters of football from. Well, yeah, and, and, and beyond all of that, Mike McKagan had to spend money at a certain point, right? Like he literally, we had, he had a limit that he had to spend over. There was a threshold where he could not spend below. Right. So but he, here's the thing though. He, and the, he ends the, up the throwing money ridiculous spent, money at guys. Yeah. He throws money at guys that, that yeah, didn't the money, out. The money that he spent, he could have, he could have actually gotten three guys that probably still would have been under contract and played well, as opposed yeah. to putting all his eggs in one basket. That was Mike McKagan's problem. Exactly. Okay, remember something. He paid over $125 million for a secondary that lasted one season. Yeah, because he paid Revis, uh, right. he Cro paid Revis, Cro he Marty, paid Marty, Gilchrist. He paid Gilchrist, he paid... And, and Buster Screen, right? right. That was, and, yeah. and Buster Screen. Okay, so, and it resulted in, in, in you know... One, one of the worst groups in the league, I think, um, overall. Right, in year two. And that was because we blew our wad one year. Ryan Fitzpatrick has a career year, and everybody was expecting the Jets to now be on the precipice of Cracking the playoffs uh, the second year, and we got a four and twelve season out of it. No, we we we've seen that song and dance before. Uh, Rob Gonzalez, uh, Lattimore is not a free agent. He's in the same situation in New Orleans as Hendrickson. They're both on the final year of the contract. Is he? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a there's there's a possibility that they're going to end up getting cut if the Saints have to. Uh, have to get under the salary cap. Yeah. There's going to be a yeah. lot. There's a, there's a lot of teams. There's 11 teams in the league that are over the salary cap. So all 11, some of them are going to have to make more drastic cuts than others. But, you know, ne nevertheless, there are still going to be some names out there that are going to be floated out there that yeah. could become available. Hendrickson, so, Hendrickson and Lattimore are – the guaranteed money is done, so they can actually clear $20 million off of their – off of their salary cap by by dealing um Lattimore and Hendrickson. So Ooh, those are trade definitely Sam Darnold for Lattimore. Yeah. Trade Sam Darnold for Lattimore? Yeah. Uh Man. if they give if they give me Lattimore in a second, yeah. I'm about to say look, okay. let's 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 not just give Sam away, right? You're, no, you're, 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 you're asking, like, Lattimore can be a franchise corner. Lattimore yeah. can be a franchise corner. He can be locked down. He's really, really good. Yeah. But at the but, same but time, Sam, he, wasn't, he wasn't a number three overall draft pick. He's no. not a franchise quarterback. So if you're if you're going to want – if New Orleans is going to want Sam, you give me Lattimore and a second, and you can have then him. you can have Sam Darnold straight across. I'll take that deal. Look, let's, let's, let's just not forget. I mean, we, as, as much as we are really kind of in the market to move on from Sam, um, the possibility of Sam going to another team and being a really good quarterback is still a possibility. Let, let, let's sure, not absolutely. let's not rule it out. So and I want him to be, you know what? I, I expect that he will be that to me. That is a reality. I think he will be a good quarterback. He'll be, a, a you know, a decent mid range to, to maybe, you know, average uh, with uh, he could be a top 15 uh, quarterback. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's just not going to be here and it's going to take him a few years to be able to, you know, shake out some of the cobwebs and shake off some of the the, the bad teaching that he's received, um, you know, here for, from this organization. So, you know, let's let's not say we're going to give him away for a bag of Doritos, especially when you're talking about a kid who has a potential to be a franchise quarterback. 
I guess Hendrickson is a free agent. Right. My bad. Well, nobody's also talking about giving giving Sam Donald away for a bag of balls. I mean, look, they're you know Sam Donald can 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 grab you a first round pick. Mm-hmm. So you know, I mean, regardless of whatever franchise gets him, you know they're they're going to be getting a quarterback who they feel like they can fix. I mean, the reason why the Jets are getting calls on Sam Donald is because they feel like they can they can fix this kid. You always have an offensive coordinator who thinks that they can fix who they can fix X player. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that that's fine. If they want to go and they want to take that chance, then let them go and take that chance. But he, here's what we want in return. I mean, if this was Mike McCagnan, Mike McCagnan would have given him away for, for a bag of balls and a slightly used jock strap. Yeah. This is not Mike McCagnan. Okay, this is Joe Douglas. Joe Douglas is going to ask for a hell of a lot more, and you're either going to you're either going to do business on his terms, or he's going to tell you to go kick rocks, and that's it. And that's the way it should be. This is how big uh, this is how big boy big boy football teams operate. Yeah. So, and that's the problem with the Jets. We haven't operated like a big boy football team. We we've operated like oh, we're just so happy to be here type of team. You know, it's like enough of that already. So uh, I want to go through these comments really quick. You guys are really blowing this up, and I absolutely love it. Um, do, do, do. Shout out to Brandon Falco, who's watching. Uh, Rob Gonzalez, uh, Rocco A. Archie, uh, Ray Burgess, do, do, do. Frank and Goglia, Kevin Serkin, do, do, do. Uh, Ray Mallard. Uh, Mallard was talking about the trade for Lattimore. Here's an interesting comment here from Ray Burgess. If Bucks keep Godwin, maybe Scotty Miller can be had. They got A.B. Evans plus Ty Johnson. Just saying. Well, I, I, would make a trade for, I would make a trade for Mike Evans, but that's about it. Look, I don't you know, think but those, that ain't happening. Those guys don't want to leave, man. They they just won a Super Bowl with, with, with Tim Brady. And Tim's still looking like he wants to play. He's gonna wanna he's gonna wanna continue on. And those guys really, I mean, I, I would have to consider they would take less money to stay in that situation. I I, I think that's just right. realistic. Exactly. These these guys are playing for rings. There, there really isn't any question about that. And uh as much as we don't like uh Tim, um, I think Tim gives them the best uh the best possibility of, of, of winning another one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh, Frank, uh, Frank and Goglia corrected you and said, Tom, Tom no, Brady. No, 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 that there's, there's no correction. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. <laughs> let's, let's no, Tim. <laughs> uh, Scotty uh, Miller is under contract until 2023, by the way. Yeah. So there go, uh, there goes Scotty Miller. So, I mean, the jets <laughs> really don't have to worry about having to make a trade with anybody. I mean, you have enough cap space right now where you can go and take a look at the, the free agent wide receivers that are out there. And I mean, these are not some bad names that are, that are on this list. I mean, yeah. talking about, let's see, the, 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 when I uh, scroll up to the top of the list, cause I want to be fair. You got Brandon Powell, who's a restriction free, restricted free agent out of uh, Atlanta. You got Juwan Green, you got Devin Gray, Laquan Treadwell, Chris Moore. Okay. DeAnthony Thomas out of Baltimore. Okay. Willie Sneed. Okay. Uh, let's see, Curtis Samuel, who we all keep talking about, Allen Robinson, DeAndre Carter, A.J. Green, although A.J. Green, 33, I don't know. How much does he have left in the tank? All right, you got Mike Thomas out of Cincinnati. Okay, JoJo Natson. <laughs> no, we already tried that. You can forget that. Okay, Richard Higgins. Okay, Tawan Taylor, Cedric Wilson. All right, who else? Jamal Agnew, Kenny Galladay. Okay, Mohamed Sanu, although he's pushing 32. How much does he have left in the tank? All right, Tavon Austin, T.Y. Hilton. Kevin talked about T.Y. Hilton earlier before. I like T.Y. And and he's not 1,000 years old. Right. So like 800 uh, years old. (laughs) 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 So he's just a little bit younger than Just a little. Just a little. Just a little bit. Okay, then we got Byron Pringle, okay? Uh, Sammy Watkins is out there, but Sammy Watkins has to, has flirted with the possibility of maybe retiring, so you never know. All right, Nelson Aguilar is out there. Tyrell Williams, there's Zay Jones, okay? Uh, I wouldn't mind Aguilar. Yeah. yeah. I was just – I was seeing that earlier too, yeah. All right, Juju Smith-Schuster, which we talked about, Ray Ray McLeod. Uh, let's see, 
Jordan Matthews, uh, Sean Poindexter, Trent Taylor. Uh, we told we already talked about Chris Godwin and Corey Davis, Marcus John Cam uh, Marcus Johnson, Cam Sims, Robert Foster. I mean, there there are players. There are yeah, there, there's players out there to be had. So you know, it, the, the question is, is that it, it's not about bringing in the name, right? Didn't I say this on on Weapons Hot uh, uh, after dark? I've been saying this. Wait, wait, you know, which is, it's not about going out and getting the shiny new toy. Yeah. It's getting the guy who's going to fit this system that's actually going to work. Okay. Good. So, you know, we could go out and we could get a big name receiver. But if he doesn't work in this in this offense that we're putting together, it's a waste of Jones. It's, it's a waste of money. This is, okay? this is, this is why I think Jet fans have the type of shell shock it is that they have because we're throwing out all these names. Think about this. When when Mike McCagden brought all of those names in, Darrell Rebus, Crow Marty, Marcus Gilchrist, Buster Green, there were all names that were associated with a level of play that had passed them by. Yep. They were no longer at that level. They were still the names. We were still excited as hell. You know, in the newspaper, it looked great. On, on, on paper, we look like we're going to be in beast mode. And then it fell off the damn map. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm not interested in the name anymore. I think when we start talking about production and we start talking about what a guy did in a specific situation with, you know, that, that has similarities to what it is that we have, that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a name anymore. I'm looking for what, what, who, who's going to be able to produce. Right. And if that, if that guy that's going to be able to produce is a name that isn't a household name, I do not care. Let's make him one here. Exactly. And this is this is what, you know, the, the, the mindset we should go we should be going into free agency with is that how can we make our football team better? Because, sure, we can go and we can get an Allen Robinson and we can go and we can get a, 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 a Kenny Galladay. OK, but if we don't upgrade the offensive line, if we don't upgrade, the, if, if, if we don't improve our running game, if we don't improve our defense, then you know what? We're. We're going to be happy that, oh, but we got Allen Robinson and I got his jersey. But you know what? We finished four and 12. I have a little bit of a question. I, I have a question about that because, CJ, again, as usual, I'm, I'm, I, I, I come to expect you to spit fire, but, but you always say some things that make me think, right? We're going to bring in Allen Robinson, but Allen Robinson had a level of production in a situation that is not similar to what it is that we have here. Did Allen Robinson have a Denzel Mims? Did he have a Jamison Crowder? No, did he have no, no. did he have a Chris Herndon? Did he have, you know, all, all of those things, you know, that we are going to be trying to solidify here? Did he have those things where it is that he was and still put up those types of numbers? Or are we expecting him to come in and still put up all of that production with guys that we are expecting to also have their own level yep, that, of productions to put up? It, yeah. it, it's it's far fetched. It really right, is. Exactly. Far-fetched. And this is the, this is the reason why you bring guys in who fit the system who know their role within the system and can work as a unit. And that's why, you know, when we all get excited about these big names, this is why sometimes big names just don't work. Look at Trumaine Johnson. Wow. I'm Trumaine Johnson was like, I was, I was he was, trying, he was, was the guy, he was name. the hottest cornerback on the market. Yeah, 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 let's go. He he did great where he was, this, that, and the third. He came to New York and he flopped. He had, he had like a Namdi Asamoa type of a, of a career path. Like he was up here and then immediately right. just fell all the way the hell off. Oh, man, that was bad. And, and we I'm paid him. Sure. Our, our, well, hold up. When did, when did we stop paying $73 million. Yes, yeah, but say, when did we stop paying him? Don't, don't, we, don't we still owe him like 20 bucks? <laughs> like, <I'm just> like, <laughs> I think we're going to be paying him 20 bucks for the next 10 years. Right, like. Give him twenty bucks for an Uber out of New Jersey. <laughs> right. Sorry, I'm, I'm glad he's going. So, still, yeah. All right, Frank and Goglia has a has a question for me, CJ. If you trade for Watson, who who can you get? Everything you're saying as well. How how he meant, how? Yeah how how can you get everything you're saying as well? Because the draft how doesn't end after because, round one. Because again, Deshaun Watson is not going to take three first round picks to get. The longer that this garbage goes on, Good. the price is going to go down. And you're, hearing, you're hearing all of these people saying, we'll give you this, that, 
a third, my, my unborn kids, you could take my yacht, you could do this, you could do that, you could do the other thing. And then Watson has the power to say, I don't want to go there because it's a worse situation than I'm already in here. Yeah. So the Texans really have no leverage. They can basically take what you get. They can basically say yes or no for what you're offering. But you still have the draft. You still have other areas in free agency where mm-hmm. you can go. The cap hit is what, Jimmy? If if we were to acquire uh, Watson? Like, like 15 million, million this year. Yeah. Right. It's 11. It's so, 11? Okay, yeah. So look, with the... Look, with, with the cuts and the contract restructurings and stuff or whatever, at the at the end of the day, okay, the Jets could still, have, could still have upwards of seventy five to eighty million dollars of cap space, where you can still go out and get guys. Plus, you still have whatever draft capital that you have left. Yes, it's very doable. Let's let's yeah. let's let's keep it in perspective, okay? Because just just let's just give the outline for what it is that we're seeing. They're saying that they want us to give what three first rounders and Sam for Deshaun Watson. And I'm telling you, that's not going to happen because the compensation that we should receive back for Sam should actually be equivalent to at least one of those first round picks. So let's just say two first round picks, um, one this year, the the two this year and what Seattle's pick going into next season, or, you know, even even if we were to say, let's go ahead and let's give them ours, whatever ours will be uh, for next year, um, which, which, if, if we are being realistic, still has the possibility of being a little uh, a little higher than what Seattle's pick um, would be, notwithstanding if they lose Russell Wilson. Let, let's, you know, again, let's, let's not completely lose it. But um, we, we still we're talking about giving up two first round picks, quite possibly a second or a third and no players. We've got four first round picks over the course of the next two seasons, which means we'll still have two first round picks. We've got we've got uh, some additional seconds, which means I think we'll still have, if not a second, um, multiple second, possibly third round picks going into next season as well. So, uh, again, we're, we're talking about giving up what is a, a sizable, you know, uh, trade package. But we're also talking about bringing in a guy that justifies giving up that pick. We're not going to we don't draft veterans. Right. How many times have I said that we don't draft veterans we don't know what it is that we're going to get at the second round pick but we can we can pretty easily say um if we were to get a deshaun watson we would be lucky we would be lucky to get a a deshaun watson with that number two pick but we know for a fact if we give up that number two pick for a deshaun watson we know what it is that we're getting Mm -hmm. so yeah uh, and and jim again uh, i remember when you said this on you said this you know coming back from green bean show phenomenal show great work also i just wanted to throw some shots out on that but um you're right. You're absolutely right. The draft does not stop after that first round pick. Um, how many How many of the starting running backs throughout the league, guys that have produced at a high level, are fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round possibly picks? Most you know of, what I'm saying? Most, most of them, exactly. Most of them. So let's just think about it in those terms. Offensive linemen, you can get quality offensive linemen in the second and third round. Yes, you do want this stud guy that you'll get in the first, but there's no guarantee that that guy is going to be the monster that you would expect him to be. Yeah, but what has Saquon Barkley done being the number two overall draft pick? In exactly, exactly. Saquon right. Barkley, Saquon Barkley cannot do it by himself. All right, and in this case, we're talking about adding guys that you know aren't going to have to do it by themselves. They're going to be part of a of a conglomeration of quality guys that will be well coached we're going to be able to do a lot more than what I think people are expecting us to be able to do. I mean, Derek Henry was a 45th pick second round. Second round. So, and, and that, and that guy is, is what the, the, the human equivalent to, you know, a, a moving skyscraper. The man's a cyborg. Sherman He's tank. Yeah. Right. right. Human. He'll be back. So, right. <laughs> I, want address, I want to address something in the comments right here. Uh, shout out to Frank and Goglia. My point is what you said about grabbing a number one wide receiver. You're contradicting yourself. Okay. You no. said we need all this help and can't spend money on a wide receiver. If you got you a number, no. number one wide receiver in Mims. Give up a shit ton of picks. Mims, I think, you is the number one receiver. The point that I'm trying to say, Frankie, I think you're missing where the point that I'm trying to get. The longer that this shit goes on, excuse my language, I know I cursed. The longer that this goes on with the Houston Texans, with Deshaun Watson and him, him not wanting to play, the price is going to go down. Yeah. Okay, the only team right now that legit has the assets to bail the Texans out is the yeah. Jets. Okay, yeah. and basically, if, by getting rid of that, con- we'd be doing them a favor by picking up his contract because his contract is insane. Okay, so it's actually, not not bad for a, a start. Give him, 
you 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 could the Finns are only going to get involved to dry up the to, to to drive up the price. Joe Douglas could walk in and say, "Look, we'll give you the number two overall pick. We'll give you Seattle's first rounder next year. We'll give you Sam Darnold, and that's it." And I, I think they'd be, they'd be they'd be foolish to not take it. Right, right. They'd be foolish. Look, the the, the the difference the difference between the number two pick and the number three pick is a lot wider than I think what people are are, are really you know kind of thinking that it is, uh, especially if you have the 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 belief that we're starting to see that Zach Wilson is 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 this all world, uh, you know, kind of a prospect and talent. And, and, and while I think it's still unwarranted to say that Justin Fields is a scrub, I personally don't think that the, you know, I, I'm not going to go back into that, but the, the, the fact of the matter is, is that if you really want a guy, number two is much better than number three, because you just have that many more opportunities to ensure that you get them. Right. Because everyone's assuming that, you know, the Trevor Lawrence is coming off the board. Number one, but if Zach Wilson ke- continues to keep shooting up these draft boards yeah, and yeah. is the top, the top was urban Meyer could have a total change of point, which means that Trevor Lawrence could end up going number two. So now shout out to Ray Burgess. This is a bidding war between Finns and us. It all comes down to the Texan. Uh, it all comes down to do the Texans like Sam or Tua. Um, he I'm also sure he does. you get Watson no matter what if you give up three ones Ooh. plus Sam just to keep him away from the wow. fit. Wow. I don't I don't even think it does come down to that no. because the fact of the matter is if, if you hold Sam in reserve, you can sneak back into the first round with Sam to Washington or New exactly. Orleans. Exactly. You don't have to deal Sam to Houston. You can say, I'm gonna give you my uh, let's just say this i'll give you the number two overall pick the number 34 overall pick and seattle's 2022 first round pick for deshaun watson and you can be done with it now the Finns can say whatever they want and if he goes there then joe douglas has all the options at number two because what if that does happen cj what if trevor lawrence does fall man then and we, and we just baby. told yeah and we just told we just told Houston to kick rocks right. because Houston Miami kicking, offered them one of their Houston extra is kicking picks themselves. Back. Yeah, the Houston is right. kicking themselves in that case, right? Sam is getting us a first rounder, Rob. This has been talked about. There have been talks. Carolina offered us the number eight pick for Sam, for Sam and a thirty four. Sam and thirty four gets us eight. That's already been talked about. This is confirmed. Washington has already confirmed number nineteen. New Orleans has confirmed twenty eight. These are confirmed discussions with Joe right. Douglas. That's uh that that's that's you know that's number one wide receiver. Wait. That's 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 uh that's Najee, you know, kind of uh Etienne kind Shot of Sean uh, Bateman uh, at twenty three. There's exactly. your number one receiver. What is a number one receiver? Hold on, hold on. That- is it is it is it Mims though? I mean, because I I, I keep I not not that I'm, I I keep missing the point on this, but is it Mims supposed to be really our number one receiver? We're looking at him and saying, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, he's he's good, but no, I I think you don't you kind of don't no, just he- walk into that in the situation that we had last season. You don't really right. establish right. A, a a super a super great number one receiver I, with I the offense argue. and the quarterback that we had. Oh oh wait wait. I, gotta, I would argue. I got to put this in here. Rock, rock away, Archie. We, we always got to put him in. Uh, the Finns just hired the Hawaii Five O kids coach to work with them. They are committed to this kid. They are out of the running, if you ask. Yeah. yeah. So um, that, that's that's reality, right? right Frankie and Gottlieb, again. Eventually, Mims will be in number one, just not yet. Right. Um, Ray Mallard is like bugging out, dude. Like he he is he's absolutely bugging out. So he's like, man, you guys are tripping. And then his next comment over here is, if you do not have a quarterback, then you don't have a foundation for your football team. Correct. Blank, guys. Come on now. Ray, this is talking about getting a quarterback who is going to lead this team into the future for the next decade. Yeah. Now, one of the things that the New York Jets have it op- have it op- have a quarterback, which we've never had before ever in this franchise, okay, is options. Because – you could go and trade your draft collateral to go get Deshaun Watson. You could go and take the number two pick and take a, a Zach Wilson or see if Trevor Lawrence will fall to you or whatever. You could also trade out of number two, go down and take a Kyle Trask or a Trey Lance. So there are plenty of no options at quarterback, and I don't understand why everybody's like bugging. It's like this goes back to what I was saying for the past couple of weeks. It's some Jet fans have it in their head 
that if we don't get Deshaun Watson, this offseason is a failure. And I want you to stop thinking that way. Stop it. Because you know what? You're not going to enjoy the offseason. You're going to spend the offseason being so aggravated and breaking dishes and glasses and being mad at the world. And it's and it, and it's the worst thing that you could do to yourself. As a Jets fan, this is a this is the best time to be a fan as a Jets fan. You know why? Because we finally hit the reset button the right way. Right. And let me ask you guys this. What is a number one receiver? There's okay. no answer. Is there's it, no there's no it, there's no definitive answer for that. Come on. Right. So you can't just say that the guy that plays on the outside because he's fast is your number one receiver. Because what if that fast guy can't catch the goddamn ball? That was Sorry. Robbie. Robbie. Yeah. And and and, and, the man and how gives how, up how, on routes. Yeah. And I'll how many argue, how many people thought Robbie was a number one? I'll Robbie. argue that see that that Jamison Crowder is our number one. It doesn't. It's not dependent. That's be an outside wide receiver. That's the that's the bottom line, though. Right. If, just just look at what it is that we did. Our offense either went through Frank Gore, or Jamison Crowder. Just just look at right. touches. That that that's that's to be seen in the numbers. That's how to be seen as a shaking out. So now we're talking about if, realistically, you're talking about getting rid of our number one receiver because he makes ten million dollars. Correct. Year. I'm saying that a number one receiver to me is a guy that you can count on, play in and play out to catch the ball, to move the chains, to to keep the drives going. Irregardless That's of the number one receiver. I don't care if Regardless you're a slot or a wide out. Regardless of matchup. Because so because because that's 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 I think why we were talking about, oh yeah, well he's no Julio Jones. There's only Mims one damn Julio be. Jones in the world, man. Real talk. Mims There's only one in the world. There'll be two now. Mims yeah. will be that guy. Yeah. I'm telling. I know they'll be they, yeah, they'll be saying, "Well, he's no Denzel Mims." That's the right. difference. You feel me? Exactly. Because Mims exactly. has all of it, man. And just think about this. If, if, in, if because again, it boils down to what it is that we do at the quarterback. If we bring in a Deshaun Watson, if, if, and I'm going to speak this as if it's going to happen, because you know I really feel like this is the only way for us to kind of go at this point to bring in Deshaun Watson. But to to have Denzel Mims, to have Herndon or whoever else is that we're going to bring at the mm-hmm. tight end position, because we are we're going to have to add. Uh, some depth at that position as well if we do keep Crowder he's going to make he's going to make Berrios better but he's going to he's going to improve all of those guys and then bringing in whether it be a a a a high price free agent or another really high pick in the draft Deshaun Watson makes all of those guys better and actually it, it just translates into better football so that's you know, in the one Jets drive as the best quarterback in the fran- in franchise history. Period. Look right. from 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 the moment his name is announced, that's it. He's the yes. guy. So that's worth that's worth three Brady. picks. To like me. he's a, like I've been talking to him for 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 a little bit while you guys were volleying back and forth. Um, he he started the conversation off with we bugging because we don't we don't want to see him in Miami. Facing Josh Allen and Watson for the next ten years would be suicide. Absolutely. Yes, but agreed. agreed. OK, but here's the thing. It's not so scary when you got a guy of your own who could come in here and who, who can bust those teams asses and be just as competitive of them. We have to stop living in fear as Jet fans of like the whole Dan Marino, Ken O'Brien yeah. crap that, uh, that happened in 83, yeah. 84. Yeah. We have to stop that. OK, because everybody was like, oh, my God, we drafted Ken O'Brien ahead of uh, ahead of Dan Marino and Dan Marino had a Hall of Fame career and Ken O'Brien. Uh, you know what it was like a mediocre quarterback stop stop joe walton's not here no more Eh. okay leon hess doesn't own the team anymore okay and i know that woody johnson has made some really stupid mistakes (laughs) that we could we could all call leon hess-esque mistakes but woody's paid some guys too man but woody chris right and kelly and Woody Johnson has kept his mouth shut up to this point. Christopher Johnson publicly came out and said, all football decisions are going through Joe Douglas and Joe Douglas has the final say he's there to write the checks because if they go back on their word, the public relations nightmare that the jets will face will be absolutely nightmarish because if they think that they felt they saw outrage this season, when this team went two and 14, just imagine the firestorm that's going to happen. That's going to erupt at one Jets drive. You know what? I, I think it would be the apathy. I think the apathy hurts more than anything else because it got to a point where as Jets fans, we, we didn't even care. 
Who cared? Like, no, like, oh, let's let's just go ahead and, and finish out the season winless. You know, let's let's slap that on Adam Gase's behind and kick him out of the door with it when, when he leaves. And we don't care. Like uh, how many how many folks tuned out after after the 10th, the 11th loss? How many guys actually stopped watching the games and just started betting on them? Right. And started <laughs> betting against the Jets, you know. Exactly. Sure. Right? Scott Clesby, who's not here in the in the chats. Dope. Every, every single day, every single Made day dope. that we were Made broadcasting dope. during the regular season, he would tell us he bet against the Jets and how much money he won. Made dough. Made it, man. Look, look, yeah. I, I, I'd, I'd be taking my lady somewhere. You know, next season on the cruise, if, if I would if I would have won all of that money. So the, the the fact of the matter is, is that that is what's changing now. Right. right. That's what's changing now. So, all right, guys. It looks like we ran uh, ran a little bit longer yeah. than we, we would have liked to. So, let's finish it up with closing thoughts, Jimmy. We're going to start with you, then we'll circle around to Jackson, and I'm going to finish it up as we uh, close out tonight's episode of Weapons Hot. So I, I want everybody to know that I'm not against spending the money. We have it. We can spend it. The draft does not end after the first round. Deshaun Watson is more than affordable. He is going to be, even after we get him, even when his cap hit is $37 million, we still have a rolling average of over $70 million for the next three or four years. After we get him. I am talking about the expense of getting players like Robinson who will likely be tagged and traded. I don't want to spend that draft capital on Deshaun Watson, then have to spend more on Allen Robinson. We don't need to because there are other extremely talented receivers out there that Watson can elevate. He can elevate the talent we have just like Daniel Smith. The CJ has been pointing it out. Do not replace talent, add talent. Do not cut Jamison Crowder. Do not just minimize what other players are doing on this current roster. We are more talented than the media gives us credit for. We're more talented than even the fans give us credit for. This team can go to the playoffs with a couple extra pieces, guys. We can do it with the right coaching staff, the right leadership, and a couple extra pieces. We are there. We are there. We're looking at a 4-3 zone defense from Ulbrich and Sala. This is going to be a legitimate defense. Yeah. There is only one direction that this offense can go, and that's up. The coach who shall not be named, this guy right here, this guy, <laughs> 32nd ranked offense the entire time he was here. We can only get better. So now that it's not a Denny's menu with Frank Gore's picture on it as our playbook, we're going to be moving up with this roster and a few extra pieces. So I'm not saying that we can't get this or this guy or that guy. I'm saying we don't need to get something that's going to be overly priced because it's going to work out in our favor. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you. All right. I'm just going to piggyback off of that, okay? Because I think the reality is is that we've been and 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 correct me if I'm wrong, but the theme is that we have so many holes that we need to add this glut of talent through free agency and through the draft. Mm -hmm. Um we're not going to have enough to be able to do all of those things, right? We can. Yes. And 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 this it, it, again, I I just want to reiterate, Jim, because again, you set this up perfectly we do have the ability to add probably more than what it is that people are expecting that we will. Okay. Nine draft picks at this point. Okay. Now think of, think of nine players that you would want to add to the team. You add nine players to this organization and you're talking about completely transforming two to three aspects of the game period. Because, I mean, you, you figure there's 11 guys on the field at all times, offense, defense, and special teams. If you add three high-quality guys to each of those to each of those teams, we're, we're, in, we're in much better shape than what it is that people think that we are. Now, mind you, again, we're not – just because that's the only aspect that I threw out the draft, think about how many free agents that we'll be able to add with $80 million, $90 million. Yeah. Okay, that you're talking about adding four, five, 
you know, how many quality, <coughs> excuse me, quality veteran starters. And then on top of that, the draft picks. Mm -hmm. And even if, even if we did give away two to three draft picks, those three draft picks will be spread out over the course of two seasons. We have nine draft picks, not only this season, but next season as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, we'll, we'll have a strong cap situation going into next season also on top of having a strong draft situation as well guys we really kind of need the real we need to reel this in a little bit and we need to think realistically about what this situation is it isn't just us here saying that this team is in the best possible situation that we've been in in decades i mean i'm just going to keep it real in decades because i think we are in a much better position now than maybe it is that we were when when we brought sexy rexy in and y'all know i love rex y'all know i love rex man but we're in a better position now i think mm -hmm. rex rex had 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 an immense defensive acumen that he brought in had very very you know uh noticeable difficulties with handling offense robert sala doesn't seem to have that problem we're getting one of the top defensive coaches in who just so happened to when he walked in brought one of the top offensive minds with him yeah Okay, so this is not this is not Rex going out trying to throw darts at the wall and bringing in Sperano and bringing in Marnie Morningwig and then and then actually you know having having us transition and have having Chan Gailey, who to be perfectly honest with you was one of our best coaches during that tenure, who just had horrible staff and was forced to make decisions that I think went against what it is that he wanted to do. That's not this situation. Okay, guys, we, we need to kind of pull this back a little bit and we really kind of need to look instead of just, you know, kind of spitting out what it is that we hear. Let's go look, look at the roster, look at the free agents, look at how many draft picks it is that we have and think rationally about where it is that we are. Uh, CJ says it all the time. We've got over 100 some odd years worth of Jets fandom here. And I'm telling you right now, throughout the, the thousand, it seems like the, the eons of Jets fandom that I've suffered through this season is probably the one that I think I really legitimately have the best feeling about because I do believe in, in the direction that we're going. And if, if, if I'm just looking at it from all of those views, because you know you wanna have the 360 view, I'm looking at it from all of those views. With regards to the draft, we're in awesome shape. We've got multiple picks. With regard to free agency, we've got a lot of money available and we've got quality guys that are gonna be interested in coming here and will be available. And then on top of that, we have a guy who's already demonstrated that he knows how to evaluate and bring in talent. Spent a lot of money bringing in Rhett Hogan. Spent a lot of money filling out the filling out the remainder of of of, of our front office. And then Joe Douglas, who's had some difficulties with free agency, well, I got we got to give it, but has done an outstanding job with the draft. And I think um, having that first year and that first season under his belt with doing what it is that he did, I think coming into this season, he'll be much more comfortable. He'll be much easier with what it is that he's looking to do. Guys, I, I just think, I, I think we need to be smart about how it is that we approach this. So let's look at it from, let's, let's pull back a little bit on the, on the, you know, we're not going to be able to do it because we have more than enough resources to be able to make this work. I'll, I'll end it there. Thank you. Well, I'm just going to start it off by saying two words, what I preach every single week, competitive sustainability. Facts. And you're not going to get competitive sustainability by going out and hiring a bunch of high price free agents that are, are not going to be sustainable for the next five years, regardless of whoever's under contract. OK, we tried that already and it didn't work. All right. The, what I'm looking for for Joe Douglas this offseason is to make smart free agent signings, which are going to better this football team. Smart draft picks, which again are going to better this football team and continue, continue to build upon the foundation, which we started to build last year. Now, we had the wrong guy at the controls. Say whatever you want about Adam Gase. Say whatever you want about Darren Loggins. It was a complete and utter mess. And uh, I'm sure every Jet fan out there will agree with me. All right. So what we need to do is we have the opportunity here with a blank slate, with a blank checkbook with nine draft picks at our disposal, potentially the, the the option of getting Deshaun Watson or whoever may come down the pike with the number two overall pick, whether it's Zach Wilson, whether it's Mac Jones, whether it's Trey Lance, whether it's whoever. We have the opportunity and the resources to turn this around sooner rather than later. But we can't just start spitballing and just say, well, we think this guy's going to fit or we think that guy's going to fit and it, or we think the other guy's going to fit 
and then it's not going to work because that's how you throw good money after bad. Yeah. And Joe Douglas is not – Joe Douglas did not get three Super Bowl rings by throwing good money after bad. Now, granted, two of them, it was more so Ozzie Newsom, but he learned under Ozzie Newsom. In Philadelphia, he did a lot of the heavy lifting. Okay, so he still brings that cred to the table – and we need to give him the same amount of flexibility and the same amount of chances like we gave McCagnan, like we gave Bradway, like we gave Idzik, like we gave Tannenbaum, and every other idiot that came after him. Okay? Because we are now in a potential with the resources that we have to, again, turn this around sooner rather than later. But in turning it around... We also want that competitive sustainability because we don't just want to compete this year. We want to compete next year. We want to compete the year after that. We want to compete the year after that and so on. Whenever the playoffs are going to get talked about, I want the New York Jets name mentioned, make having a legitimate run to go deep in the playoffs. When it comes to the content or contending for the AFC East, and everyone seems to think that, oh, we're looking up at Buffalo now. Great. Here we go again. Buffalo is not the Patriots. Stop right there. Buffalo is a very good team. They're the team to beat in this division. Miami, right behind them. <clears throat> the Patriots, still a huge question mark, but you know as long as Bill Belichick is head coach there, they're always going to have an inside shot. He's got a lot to prove. It's time for us – to take that chip on the shoulder and to start using it against the rest of the AFC East. And we may have had year after year after year after year of failure. And Jet fans get picked on in the AFC East all the time. Why? Because our franchise has been a joke. Well, this is the first time that we could look at the franchise and say, we have the potential to not be a joke anymore. Okay. You may not agree with the Joe Douglas decisions. You may not like some of the players that he brought in. But if you're rude for this team, get behind it. Yep. Plain and simple. Be a Jet. Yeah. Live like a Jet. Play like a Jet. Bleed green and white the same way we all have done. Because we still bleed green and white no matter how many stupid decisions this franchise has made. How many different shows we've done when they hired Adam Gase. When they fired Mike McCagney, when they hired John Idzik, okay? So I get everyone has their reservations and every single person has their own singular vision of what, the, what they think the New York Jets should look like or what they think the New York Jets should do. And that's fine. But at the end of the day, regardless of whatever decisions that they make, and whatever team that they feel, support your team 110%. Yeah. And that's what it's about. If we're ever going to get rid of the post-traumatic stress disorder, the only way the PTSD goes away is by winning football games. And I don't care who we need to bring in to do that. If they're winning football games, then I don't care who's playing. Yep. Go get me Shane Falco, okay? Go get me, uh, what's the dude, uh, 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 Paul Crew from the from the friggin' Mean Machine, okay. I don't care who's out there on the center. If they're winning ball games, okay. Right, go give me Fitch from the Wildcats. Right. <laughs> so bleed green and white. Be proud of your team, and it's okay to agree to disagree if you like one guy and somebody else likes another. It doesn't make you a bad fan. It doesn't. But just have a realistic output for this team. Have a realistic output. And you know what? Realistically, look at the draft picks. Look at the salary cap. Look at the people that are available. You make the right moves. No reason why this team can't be competitive next year. None. And that's all I got to say about that. So with that, we're going to end tonight's episode of Weapons Hot, a New York Jets fan broadcast here on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network, Sports World Radio, and Snowman Digital Media. I would like to thank every single person who was in the comments. Ray Mallard, Matthias Simon. Love you guys. Rockaway man. Archie. 
uh, Frank and Goglia, Rob Gonzalez, Kevin Serkin was watching for a little while. Uh, it, uh, Eddie Delgado, El Chapo, shout out to him. Um, few other people over here. If I missed your name, I do apologize. But I thank you guys every single week for, for chiming in, dropping your comments in. You can follow the show on Twitter at CNC Jets Factor. You can follow me, JetsFan0523. My partner's in crime. On the other side of the glass, Mr. Kevin Jackson at Spotty Blackman, Mr. Jimmy the Reaper Jardine at Jets by Jimmy. Also, go to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network Facebook page, their website, like it, subscribe to it, bookmark yeah. it, go to Google Play if you have an Android, down the, uh, download the app. If you have an Apple, an iPhone, go to the iOS system, type in WWSRN, search it up. That is the best way to consume Weapons Hot, not only live, but also our archive episodes. So you can see some of the stuff that we that we reference over and over and over again. All right. Another thing, Weapons Hot also has a Facebook page. Make sure you like and subscribe. Our content's up there. Message us a message right back. We love going back and forth with fans about this team. Also, leave us some feedback about how we're doing here on Weapons Hot. If there's a particular topic that you'd like us to talk about, please, mm-hmm. you, you know, hit, hit us up. We'll explore all the topics, okay? No matter how mundane they may be, no matter how ridiculous they may be, we, we love going over different topics, moving forward with the New York Jets, all Jets related, et cetera, et cetera. Also, <laughs> don't forget to check out Weapons Hot After Dark, okay? On our YouTube channel, be sure to go like and subscribe, put your notifications on. Every time we do a Weapons Hot After Dark uh, show, you will get a ping that will let you know that we are live. Tune in. Hopefully this time the live comments will work because last show the live comments didn't work. (laughs) So uh, I I have no idea what happened with that, but whatever. So be sure to go like, subscribe. There's plenty of ways that you can consume uh, Weapons Hot and interact with us, message us. We love talking to you guys, and we cannot thank you enough for the support. If you agree or disagree. We'd love to hear it. Real, real talk, guys. If, if you agree with something, throw it out. If you disagree, throw it out. Um, the debate is always the, the, is always the point. We'd True. Love to, hear, we'd love to hear love to hear your ideas. Love to hear why it is that you think that we're wrong. And we'd love to be able to tell you why 100%. it is that you're wrong. <laughs> right. All right, exactly. I mean, look, you got, you know, we, we, we say it every week. We come up here and we give our opinions as fans. Okay, we don't know it all. We don't have sources inside the Jets, or Jets organization. We do our research. We read our articles. We listen. We listen to shows. We consume other shows, and so on and so forth. And we give our honest, educated opinion by the information that we have in hand. And you know what? Not everybody's going to agree with what we have to say. Not everybody's going to like what we have to say. And you know what? But that's just a fact of being a fan. You you get ten Jet fans in one room. Not one of them are going to have the same opinion. Everybody's going to have a different, singular version. Or, or a different singular vision on how they feel the Jets should go about free agency, the draft, whether it's play calling, whether it's how, how you do this, how you do that, how you do the other thing. You're never going to get two Jet fans in, in, in the same room that agree with everything. And if you do, then a meteorite's going to come down and, and, and explode, and we're all going to be extinct after that, and then the dinosaurs are going to pop back right, up. Right, right, right. All right, then at that point, nobody cares. But, you know, nevertheless – we love giving our opinions. That's what we're here for. We love having this platform to give our opinions. And again, that's what we're here for. We do this for you guys because we love you guys. We appreciate and love the support that you guys give to us by listening, by tuning in every single week. And this show would not exist without you. So right. give yourselves that's a round of applause for you guys in the comments. Okay. Cause that's how much we love you. All right. So for Jimmy, the Reaper Jardine, over at his, well, well, he's on that side. There we go. Um, at his top secret bunker over there in Idaho. And for Mr. Kevin's body, Blackman Jackson, over at the, the, the Jackson compound in Georgia. This is CJ, the painkiller, D. Simone from Armory Studios here in Palm Bay, Florida, signing off. We will see you guys when we see you guys. And I will leave you guys with, still, in my opinion, is the best chant in the National Football League. <laughs> All right, guys, you have a great night. Enjoy. We'll catch you guys next week. Love you guys. Be safe out there. Wash your hands. Wear your mask. That's it. It's the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Network.